Yes. Yay! Yay! We're live. I I hope. Hello, 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 lovelies. I think I also done yeah. goofed in something very bad. Let's see if the chat box. Yeah, the chat box is going to be bad because I updated it the other day to make it oh. similar to the way it was done in. Oh, no. uh, uh oh, what am I getting? I'm getting a notification off a of messenger of all things. What the hell? Okay, random. Oh, oh, whatever, hear, that's not hear, for me. I Don't hear the worry. messenger call. Yeah, what is that? Like, motion, motion, motion. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. There all we right. go. Don't worry about it. Somebody, I think, accidentally did a done goof. Is all. All right. Perfect. Who's that man on the TV? KG. Those abs. <laughs> what? You don't know anything Joker. about the One Piece. <laughs> the One Piece is real. Hold on. Let me. If y'all, if y'all follow the Twitters, y'all know full damn well who that man is. But we're gonna take him off the screen for now. Uh, so anyway, ladies and gents, once again, welcome one and all to another fun, exciting edition of, as you guys already know it, the Pokepod World Podcast here with me. I got a huge selection of buddies tonight, especially one who's returning with us this week as well. Uh, so hey, let's hey. go and say hello to all of you lovelies here in the call. We'll begin from right to left. So we're gonna begin with Polly. Hello, everybody. It's good to be back after three weeks, two weeks. No, oh, a while. Let's go with that. A while. <laughs> a while. <laughs> we, uh, moving on from her, we got Emmy. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. After you, we got our buddy Cosmic Vengeance underscore. Let's let's be sure we see, we keep the underscores intact, of course. We don't talk yes. about the one with the underscore without the underscore. <laughs> Yeah, we, we the 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 okay. <laughs> well, you get out. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, and then, at last but not least, for now, anyway, because one of our buddies is going to be running a wee bit late, uh, but here with us, anyway, is going to be TSS. Man, why did you dust off the? Why didn't you dust off this fucking couch, dude? It's been like that. For like nobody came on Thursday. I was all alone, buddy. I was so sad. You didn't dust the couch. If you're alone, you could have cleaned. Why would I clean in sadness when I wasn't around with my <laughs> homies? <laughs> with your tears! It's okay! <laughs> so, Thank ladies you. and gents, we got a filled up session for tonight because there's a lot that's been going on this past couple of weeks from announcements, presentations, tournaments, contests, episodes books apparently and even experiences uh but before we even get into any of that let us take this opportunity to first off say hello to all you lovely peeps out here in the call currently i want to see those hellos so i can say hello back to each and every single one of y'all uh because tonight like i said is going to be in a fun night so we want to go and give our thanks and hellos to all the lovelies out here with us tonight so yeah like I said, we got so many good things to talk about. We got so many fun things to address. And, uh, yeah, but what do you guys say? Shall we get started with our shenanigans for the week? Let's go. Yes. All right. So let's begin with something that I think our buddy uh, TSS will probably enjoy. Because I've been spamming this thing on, uh, what do you call it? On, on Messenger for these past couple of days. I blame TSS for getting me back into this again, even though technically it wasn't his fault, but I'm still happy about being a part of it now. Uh, that might be a new gotcha game again, 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 that I decided to install in my game. And that is uh, Pokemon Masters EX. As you guys already know, it is a very big deal that's happening currently in the Pokemon Masters game because we are now celebrating the third anniversary of the franchise which can only mean one thing with given my experiences with gotcha games especially with dragalia lost uh expect a sad announcement in a couple of months buddy that's all i can say well that. also also on that subject um i think they accidentally i think i think they're hinting when the anime is going to end really did they accidentally because, teased it well here's the thing if you look specifically on the satoshi events the end date is going to be at, on October the 20th at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. And that's about the time that the series changes usually, right? Usually around the time at the end of October right. or early November, if I'm correct. Right. But but considering that considering that they that the events are ending on October the 20th, that could be a, a hint that that could be around the time where the anime will either end or go on hiatus. 
Hmm. It could be the case. You are right on that front. Uh, so yeah. it's only a matter of time, really, to, also, to see what they're going to decide on that front. Also, in addition, they added a new requirement in the dailies, and we're going to talk about that as well. Um, the trainer lounge is now available in the game where you can um, interact with, uh, well, it's nine trainers to begin with. And uh, if you have the sync pairs for them, and there's going to be more added later, you can have up to three interactions a day. But now, um, in addition to, to get, in order to get the 80 gems, um, what they did was first they added the sync orb, the, the sync orb um, training requirement about a month and a half or two months ago. And now they added a requirement that you must do one interaction a day in the lounge in order to get the 80 gems for the dailies. That is and go check and go check that out because uh, you can gift items. They would they uh, when you first uh, when you first do the lounge, they will go through the tutorial. So it's it's not that difficult. You have to basically um, when you interact with the trainer when, of the of your choice, what you basically do is they have a bunch of selections on the screen, and your and uh, your goal is to keep the interest level up as high as possible by choosing. A subject that they that you think they would be interested in. Um, if you if you choose either a not great subject or not a or a subject that they're not interested in, the uh, meter counts down from one hundred percent. So your goal is to keep the meter as high as possible uh, while completing the interaction, and then after the interaction, um, they will give you a gift. And then that will count as one. And also, if you get your train, if you get to the, the the friendship levels up to a certain level, you also get um, certain uh, pictures that will appear in a scrap in a photo book, like a scrapbook, on the right of the screen. And also, um, the lounge also change uh, the view outside of the lounge also changes depending on the time of day, which is uh, pretty cool as well. Also, for and some reason, there's a deerling too. Yes. That's random, but that's how it is. It's like, the deer, oh, look, the it's deer broke into my room in the lounge once, and I was like, why the hell is it in here? It's <laughs> just yes. randomly there. No explanation. It's just there. I'm going to assume it's probably like something that's going to change. Like once we go into the fall season, it's going to change into that season dearly. Yes. But it's just that so random for me as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so Master ZX went through a big update uh, and as shown on screen as well, you guys get the opportunity to see our boy Ash and Pikachu come into the game for the very first time. Master ZX did something that no other game has done in a while, and that is actually make Ash and Pikachu playable in a video game. Yay. And I'm happy mm. about that. But you know what makes things even better? You know what makes things so much more sweeter? He is broken. He is oh, beyond no. <laughs> broken. He is absolutely busted in this game. He does so much damage that it is pretty much a nuke button. And one of the, like, if you try ultra hard missions and all that, Pikachu can single handedly take out those Pokemon by itself. Like, I, I did an Elite 4 match with Phoebe, uh, who was a 3v1. I didn't have any other partners with me. I was like, let me go and check on this. So, Ash and Pikachu, I just left him by... I just left them by themselves. I didn't give him any other partners whatsoever. I just let those two go in by themselves in this fight. And they took out the level 125 uh, trainers. Just one Pikachu did all that work. And it tells you how much of a big deal this Pikachu is, especially if you for you, you got to make sure you do two things. One, make sure you get it to three five, which is very difficult to do because this is a master fair, if I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, so it has a one percent chance rate for summoning Ash and Pikachu. Uh, so I went under the pity system <laughs> and I got Ash and Pikachu through that. Well, one of the one of them anyway. Uh, the other way I got him was you would probably believe this, but you know there was that like welcome Ash thing that they had on the very left when you open up the gotcha thing that only costs like a thousand paid gems. I thought that meant if you paid a thousand gems, that instantly guaranteed you get Ash. No, because I did it and I got him there. 
Yeah, but that's so I sure. thought that oh, I thought that was perfect. I was like, "Holy shit! If I could just do that, oh my god, that makes me happy." <laughs> and I did, and then I find out, no, that's just you have to be lucky. And I, I guess I was lucky on that front there. So huzzah yeah. for that. Um, but yeah, so I was able to get my boy Ash and Pikachu to three five six ex. Absolutely busted in this game. Nukes out every single thing in the screen. And what makes things even better is that he's not the only one that's showing up for the third anniversary because I think tomorrow Cynthia and Lucario are going to be making an appearance. Uh, yeah. And then soon after that, Red and Pikachu are going to show up. I can't summon for them because I have nothing. <laughs> no more. I'm broke. I love Pika. Oh, uh, yes. But if you guys love your Pikachus, go for the Red and Pikachu as well. I heard Red and Pikachu are supposedly also well, busted as well. I'm good because I already have like 128,000 gems. So. Did you summon for Ash and Pikachu? Yes, I did three 11s and I got on the third 11 pull. Hey, good job, buddy. So not so not bad. It's only about 9,000. No, I, dude, I was, I was banking on luck because I was only in 30 compared to your 100 here. Because I decided well, also, to show up well, after so well, many years. Also, since also since since I've been playing from the beginning of the game, I'm um, uh my stamina meter is at nine hundred and ninety nine. Damn. Damn. Now is that stamina meter like because of your level ups or because of the fact that uh I was you just a, haven't I, spent I, I any basic, stamina? No, no. It's because it's it's because since I've been grandfathered in, even though even though my max um my max um what is it the 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 max um the the max thing the max the rank uh, yeah no 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 not max rank i'm only like rank i'm like rank 89 or something like that um the stamina right yes the max stamina the max stamina of my character is technically 215 but i have 999 oh shit <laughs> so what i so what i basically do is i use 200 stamina Drop it down to seven ninety nine, get the get the two hundred, and then it goes back to nine nine nine. Also, um, if I keep it above, if I keep it above like um, a certain level, like like a certain amount of stamina, it then it will re then it will reset to nine 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 after a level up. Nice. So that's how so that's how I've been basically doing it. Like during the whole thing where you had where you could get like four hundred and then the two hundred. What I was basically doing was I was I was doing. Um, I did, I use like skip tickets to do like 400, had to get the 400, then do the 200, which is the daily and then get that. So I was, so I was like, like, uh, getting crazy amounts of tickets for the events. So the, the, um, you know, usually with these events, they give you like tickets and then you can trade them in for items. Mm -hmm. and that's probably one of the reasons why I have like 999,999 sync orbs. Nice. And like, uh, what was it like? Uh, 60, 63,000 level one Emanuels and shit. That's what happens when you play the game too much. Hey, listen, as a gotcha game player myself, well, not with this one, but with another. I well, can I could, I could tell you, that. I could tell you how many days that I've been logged into this damn game because I, now I haven't, now there are days where I didn't play the game, but very rarely because usually I just open it up, uh, do the dailies and then just, uh, get going. Um, but, um, I've been playing since like virtually day one and, um, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a really great feeling. So like, for example, for me, um, I have 918 logged in days. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't say anything. I, like I said before, uh, but no, nah, like I said, everyone has their right to enjoy. Again. If some enjoy it, some don't, yeah. that's perfectly fine. Um, so Yeah. You know, Masters EX, I have to ask the girls here. Uh, have you at all played Masters EX? Yes. Oh, a Cosmic, how about you? So yes. well, how's how's Masters EX been I'm for currently, you? I'm currently in a relationship with N, and I'm, I'm <laughs> living my high school fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am the same, but with Cynthia, so I mean, I could totally understand Monica. that. I've been waiting years, bro. This game did everything that I think a lot of people have been waiting for, and that's make a visual novel come to life kind of relationship. And that is what I'm feeling with this character here with Cynthia. Well, like... I can't believe this game lets you do these things. That, that's the best thing about this game, this new feature. The lounge is going to, I, I kid you not, the lounge is going to awaken some things in fans and is going to make people hop into this daily, nonstop, just for the interactions alone. Because they are some of the most 
amazing, cute little nods that you could possibly get. There are moments where the characters will talk to you, tell you about what it is that they liked, what they don't like, the do's and don'ts, and uh, the Max vibes, and ju just their voices are just so adorable, bro. And it yeah. gets even better, because when you get to a certain level, I got to level 10 with Scythia, uh, they unlock an additional story alongside that, that continues to unlock as you keep leveling up the... Uh, the love rate with them or just the friendship rate it's love let's yeah. be real here uh but yeah <laughs> it, it, it's it's fun so far only nine characters have been added to it but i'm pretty confident more will be added later down the road so if you guys wish to find yourselves in a quote-unquote relationship with one of your favorite uh characters from the pokemon franchise now is the best opportunity for you to hop on into Pokemon Master ZX and cross your fingers in hopes that you get the character you want and begin your relationship with them. I, you will get rewarded by it, by the way, by speaking with them. So make sure you do so daily. Uh, as it also, as TSS have said before, it applies now to your daily scores. So yeah, thumbs up on that. Uh, but aside from Cosmic, uh, Emmy, Polly, do you two play EX at all or have had? The chance to I play played it for three seconds and then got frustrated because I didn't have enough gems. But uh, the closest thing I have to Masters is the voice of Red. The English voice of Red is actually a friend of mine, which is pretty Wait, cool. Really? That's yeah. so cool. What? How's that? He dated my college roommate. He's a cool guy. I mean, they're not dating anymore. Ayo, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yeah, isn't what? that a small world? And he also, this guy also voices um, Bede in Twilight Wings. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. So he's really making a name for himself as a voice actor. But... He appreciates uh, those. As, in terms of me playing... I'm, <laughs> yeah. Like we said. Well, I mean, I, to be fair, gotcha games are kind of a niche sort of thing for yeah. audiences. Some sometimes you get into it, sometimes you want. I will say I absolutely adore the one, two, three remix. Yeah. They made for Ash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It I, I will say there is one nitpick I have with it, and I'm pretty confident other people might agree with me on that. I'm sad that it's all they had to cut it short, obviously. Because mm -hmm. the songs usually never go above, like, a certain amount. So the chorus segment got cut in half and went straight to the ending part. Like, instead all of right. doing the full, the one, two, three, you know, and all that, they normally have two sections to that chorus. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the remix, it's only one, and then it goes to the ending of it. Uh, I wish they could have done a little extra to have added that second bit in, but it's perfectly fine. I I'm just happy... Uh, you know, it's going to be so weird when I see people play with Ash for the first time and be like, huh, so they made an original song for him, I guess. And that'll hurt the most <laughs> for dub audiences, man, because they won't ever know where this came from. This is the most acknowledgement any Pokes got on the dub side of things when it comes to an opening like this in a long while, yeah. which is amazing. And yet heartbreaking at the same time. Now, where's the CD that Dan released? <laughs> All right. But well, yeah. it's going to come out October 26th. And well, you're right. In terms of the uh, openings versions, right? Uh, yes. The collection. Which, uh, did anybody get their hands on the Blu-ray one? I am. Oh, sweet. I need you to send me the files for that because I went digitally for this one. Uh, so, yeah. I hope you get the chance to uh, send me those files for the Blu-ray ones, buddy. I would love to get my hands on those. Because I think this is the first time that they're actually doing that, if I'm correct. Well, yeah, this is like the first time that we're actually getting Blu-ray versions of the openings. Because the the like the like Sun and Moon one, that was a DVD. Mm -hmm. That so, one I have, the collection, yeah, over here. And yes. they are just pure DVD, which is like the 480 one. So it's yeah. not the full. So this one is going to be... People still buy Blu-ray? Dude, Blu-ray is the current, though. That's the thing. If yeah. we're talking DVD, we're talking about that old retro 480 you know, P version, which is, of course, yes, and we still buy it because they still make them. Uh, and yeah. it's the only thing we can use to get access to these creditless versions of the opening songs or ending songs. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but Master ZX, great job on y'all for... Uh, Making the Ash and Red relationship a reality. Oh, did you guys by any chance see the poster that they made for Famitsu Weekly? 
Cause that that was probably one of the most hype looking posters I think I've ever seen for the um for the series. Like legitimately, one of the most coolest posters of all time. Here, let me go and uh, actually get that right now for y'all, cause this is something that y'all need to see to believe. Because I I am amazed by this. I absolutely just adore adore this poster. So yeah. Let me go and open it up right now for y'all here. And there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's see. Open this up. And there you go. You'll see it right over here oh. to the very right. Just look at that. That's okay. very cool. That looks that, really cool, yeah. I, I I shit you now. I wish this was actually in the uh, cover of or in the opening of the game. Because I, I also would love for this as a poster too. Because... This this is the first time Red is also smiling too when you think about it <laughs> in like a, an official artwork because he's always serious and everything but like these are two legends like, two legends so serious oh man I hear a ghost for some reason in the background who was that <laughs> uh, Tylo buddy we'll bring you in board soon uh, no, sorry yeah I, I heard you guys were talking I didn't want to interrupt so it's kind of it's all good what is buddy. your avatar. Oh no no! That's because what I'm saying. She, that that's all. I was playing around with oh. the ghost thing. She's she's here. Don't worry. She's just in the background. Like she's just walking on stage. Let's I go know. with that idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So there we go. Walk on through. There we go. There is. <laughs> <laughs> oh she was crawling under the couch so she could get in here. There you go. Beautiful. Um, so yeah. Uh, great poster. Great stuff. Uh, the poster looks like you made it. <laughs> I wish. Nah, th th this is exciting. This is legitimately exciting. I love this artwork. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Pokemon Masters DX, the third anniversary. If you guys want to get your hands on the game right now, it's available to download for free. Uh, and try out the game at this moment because of the fact that the event is currently ongoing. Yeah, uh, there's a lot 3, of free gems. gems. Yeah. yeah. But actually, yeah. actually I, think, I think for the whole month, it's going to make 100,000. They're going to give away like 100,000. Yeah, supposedly people are saying that even events and all that stuff that are going to be happening throughout the month of September, it will give you more than enough to actually uh, get up to a pity pull amount for a summon. So if you keep doing this, uh, you'll be able to pity pull the, for at least Ash or Cynthia or yeah. Red. Yeah, the Satoshi event is going uh, well. The, the at least the other the um, the actual like battle events those are going to October the twentieth, and um, right now uh, yeah and actually okay so the pulls the pulls for the sync pair it's going to um, October the seventeenth, which I believe is a Pokemon which I believe would be an ep a date of an episode. Or no, it's not October seventeenth. Okay, so it is October seventeenth. I don't know. I don't know why, why I said the twentieth, but it says the seventeenth. Yeah, October the seventeenth at one fifty nine a.m. Yeah. That's when. That's when it's going. That's when the pools are going to end, and that's when the um, the event is going to end in the in the battle and in, in the battle exploration. Yeah. So. Like we mentioned, it's going to be a fun time all around for Masters. Great opportunity right now to try out the game if you guys have yet to do so. So, let's now go and move on into our next topic. This one is going to be uh, with Cosmic, actually, because we had a lot of things happening these past couple of weeks on the Discord community. I think it only feels appropriate, Cosmic, for you to be the one to uh, initiate the discussion in regards to the stuff happening and what we're going to be discussing tonight with this uh, particular contest that happened a couple of days ago. Yeah, of course. Um, well, first things first, though. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that the people we are going to be featuring are all in the chat right now. Um, so I love Yay. that they're here. So guys, make sure to hype them up. I'll add all of them in the chat when I, when I say their names. Um, but in the Champion World server for the past two weeks, we were holding an art contest. The winner of the art contest got to have their art featured as a new sticker on the server, as well as it also becoming an emote. Um, and they also got other stuff. They got a month of Discord Nitro. Um, obviously, they're going to be featured here on the PokePod. And they got a custom roll that said they are the art winner. The winner of that contest was our lovely friend Squeed, who yeah. actually drew Ruby and... 
it showcased Ruby playing Xenoblade Chronicles 3. <laughs> the, the, oh, prelude, the prelude to the end of chapter 5, not knowing what's about to happen to him. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> what, I, I will what? say, I, I genuinely was surprised by this art contest because this was meant to be a contest that was meant to relate to just anything relating to the, to the podcast. Not just only ours, but the champion worlds and even just the members within the community, correct? Uh mm-hmm. And to my surprise, there were a lot of submissions that featured Rubes, and that put a smile on my face. So to all the people who went out of their way to make these drawings of Ruby, uh, you get my sincerest thanks. Seriously, it's amazing. I love all the Ruby artworks that you all have made. Uh, Oh my god, that's Ruby pulling you, yippee. Wait, (laughs) wait, wait. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you everyone for all your love and support. And congratulations once again to our buddy Squeed for being the winner of the first art contest that we had for the Champion Worlds Discord server. But, of course, as Cosmic stated before, that is not the only uh, thing we're going to be discussing as well, correct? Correct. So, in second place, we actually had one of the Discord mods win. And that is our lovely friend Drift, Drift Lunatic. Uh, You might know her from YouTube. She makes amazing content. Uh, If you guys are interested, here's the link to Drift's page. Highly recommend checking her out. She's hilarious. Shout out to Drift. Yes, everybody go go sub to Drift. But she drew the cutest shiny jump luff ever. Look how cute. Like, it's just an adorable thing. Um, But second place did have the option of getting their um, art piece featured as an emote. So we now have this as an emote on the server as well. And I am so sorry. My dogs are having the zoomies downstairs. I don't know what's going on. So <laughs> don't guys, worry. My dogs are the same, too. You guys have your dogs ready. That's why. <laughs> but, uh, Drift, I absolutely love what you're doing with this art. I think that your art is amazing. And I hope to see more of it in upcoming contests because everything you do is fantastic. And look, it's pink, too. We appreciate and it's pink. pink. Yes, everything pink. <laughs> now, the next one, which is third place, was actually done by our lovely friend Rexu who is also in the chat. Rexu does stream here on Twitch. Be sure to go give them a follow there. Uh, but they actually drew a tribute to Sister Dash which is oh. I, I feel like Emmy, I, I want you to Yay. make a comment about Sister Dash as you are one of the duo of the founding sisters. Look at the Pikachu. The Pikachu here. Oh my <laughs> god, I never <laughs> paid attention to the fact that there's a Pikachu oh, there. There is. Oh. I just get it. <laughs> So you cute. need to explain Cynthia in a maid outfit. No. What is the context? <laughs> no, it just means that Cynthia no. approves of Sister Dash. No. That's all. Yeah. Uh, either Cynthia that or Rexy just Sister loves Dash. Cynthia too and just decided to draw. Which, first of all, 10 out of 10. We appreciate yeah. the Cynthia drawings, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Good job, Rexy. I'm so proud of you. Good job. But as a reward, even though they didn't win and this isn't featured as artwork... Me, along with the other sisters of Sister Dash, all came into agreement that Rexu mm-hmm. is the first and only person to have received this honor of winning unlimited pastries from our bakery for life, <laughs> for free. Yep. And again, Damn. this is a privilege no one else has, not even yeah. KG. Not even KG. I need yeah, because yeah, wow. y'all <laughs> forgot about me, but we won't get into that. No, no, no. no we no, did no, not no. forget about you. You betrayed we us. Have we have one more art piece to feature, which does feature oh, yeah, the sisters and the tree of Sister Dash, <laughs> which is made by our lovely mod and friend, Aww. Joker. I want to give Joker a shout out because Joker just started streaming. So guys, go follow Joker as well. Nice. Uh, so oh, who's Sister everybody Dash. in this image? Okay, so the one in the middle is Joker with the white hair, and hmm. she's holding her adorable dog, Snubs. Snubs. It's a corgi. No. We love corgis here. Uh, the one, then I'll go in the circle. So it's Emmy in the bottom left. Then there's Infernal Absolution, which is my evil persona. So oh. it's actually Infernal Absolution underscore. Then above that is Evilly, which is Emmy's <laughs> evil persona. <Yeah. laughs> then next to that is our lovely friend Groot. Team Cheese. Team Trees. Team trees. Yeah. Team trees. If, you, if, if you love trees, you love Groot. Now on the other side, in the t- in the top right hand corner, we got Drift, Drift Lunatic. I don't know 
what Drift was, was on, but Drift is seeing something. <laughs> 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 uh, under that, nah, she is... got nah, she got bladed by by Ric Flair. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love it. Uh, <laughs> un under that, even though she is a competing baking company, she is featured here, and that is Jet, Joker's evil persona. Yeah, scary. Oh. <gasps> Next to that, with no evil persona, but just a lot of sass and a lot of love. Is KG's Ruby. There we go. Nice. That we love me. the rubes. Is that a but, scarf on its neck? Yeah, because it's extra yeah. sassy. Ah. Yeah. Ruby yeah, appreciates it. scarves. Yeah. <laughs> Hold that side. Yeah. But that, that is the... We gave her an honorable mention. Uh, Joker had the most amount of reactions to this that were not official votes. Um, Oops. That being said... I did just look at all of the voting, and Joker, if you submitted it earlier, you probably would have won. And by that, I mean so, you definitely would have won. Yeah, because so, technically you weren't even supposed to be in it. Apparently, you told me it was like oh, a couple of minutes extra over time or something like that. Yeah, I, I gave I gave her two minutes. <laughs> I, I, I let it slide. <laughs> I, I was biased because I'm in it. But uh, oh yeah, <laughs> just to let everyone know, we did skip out on the bottom right one over there, and that being, of course, our buddy over mm -hmm. here, Cosmic. Yeah, I I am in it. There's a little snubble in my pocket. Oh, I love, I love it. it. Oh, the, oh, and the hat too. Don't forget the hat. Snubble hat. Oh, <laughs> Emmy, wasn't this like your idea for a shirt with a Pikachu at one point, or was it with Ruby? Yes. Where you, like you pull oh, no, down the the button or, or the oh. the pocket, and it shows it like was Ruby. And it was like, it would become a buddy today. Uh, That's what it was. Yeah. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just need someone to, to draw the ruby uh, sleeping inside the pocket. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Good lordy. Uh, but yeah, so once again, congratulations to every single one of y'all for participating, first of all, in our first art contest hosted by our buddy Cosmic. Uh, and once again, Cosmic, thank you so much for being the one to host said contest and allowing these uh, artists to have an opportunity to uh, express their art pieces. Because there are some really good ones that we got throughout this tournament yeah. that really uh, cut it close for a lot of them, you know. And if you oh. folks that are currently here on Twitch.tv would like to see these drawings, uh, the server is, of course, available for y'all. You can join us and become a buddy today. And in there, you'll actually be able to see access to the art contest tab where you can see all of these submissions that were provided by folks that put their love and effort into these drawings. And as stated before, this is the first of many things that are going to be happening on this Discord server. Not too long ago, me and Emmy... Uh, who were grateful enough to host well not really yeah we were able to host the commentaries for the uh first ever pokemon showdown tournament that we had on that discord server done yeah. by our buddy Groot who was the one that Good initiated that, that. Yeah. uh so thank you Groot as well for opening that door up and allowing so many new competitors to go and face each other which led to a lot of hilarious and iconic moments in that fight. There, there. Yes. You know, uh, for some of you all, you might got, you guys might know about the Richie's one HP joke uh, that he always tends to do in our past commentaries in the Pokey Hype Train. Uh, that actually happened in one of the battles yeah, in this fight, which is incredible. And it was with a Linoon, I think, right? I love Lanoon. That Lanoon, battle was my Lanoon favorite. became my favorite now, thanks to that. I don't know what happened, but I'm I'm now Team Lanoon, thanks to that tournament. Yes. Uh, and also that little sub battle that me and Emmy had at the end oh as well God. was also just as <laughs> ridiculous too. Iliolith is yeah. my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell that to Pikachu. Who, who, who gonna oh, no, win? So the painful. giant magma breathing monster? Or, or one you know, little... <laughs> <laughs> One little oh Meliolisk boy. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> I was just, I was just playing for fun, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I suck at typing, and I'm like, please, Meliolisk, just do something, just, just do something. And then it took out Groudon in one hit. I was like, oh my god. You're a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> you risk the miracle worker. Uh, so yeah, just to let people know what that move was, it was Grass Knot, and I believe the effect is that it's the heavier you are, the tougher it will damage you. And if you guys yeah. know how heavy that ground on be, uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it, it go knock That's it out. Damage. So yeah, 
Good oh, job but, on you, Emmy, for that one. Really great. In regards, there. in regards to that contest, though, I do want to give a shout out to the winner, which was Talon, who was another mod on the server. Um, he is also in the Masters Eight for the Silverwing Ring Cup that's hosted by Goggles, Ooh. which should be happening later in September. So that's really exciting. Um, but I'm gonna give him a shout out. Also, I don't know if he's in the chat, but guys, we definitely go check him out. He's been doing a lot with Sword and Shield for prep for that. Uh, so if you want to learn more about competitive, go check him out. Yeah, and also, uh, as shown above on the TV here, you'll know that uh, we actually have an image to coincide with the uh, Masters A tournament hosted by our buddy Goggles. Uh, no details as of right now, at least that I'm aware of, in regards to when this is going to take place. I think it's supposed to be this week, but I haven't heard anything yet, though. No. Uh, and I'm going to assume we won't hear about it for a while, uh, only because, as well, with Tyrone being a part of it too and him still being busy with personal stuff they might continue to push it back just a little further yeah, yeah. we're waiting till he's ready okay perfect so uh that actually might need to make me update that goddamn thing because i wasn't sure that's why i put the tbd for saturday because i wasn't sure if the the thing was going to happen on saturday or not so i'll let people know right now uh i'll also be participating in the masters eight as well uh, and not in the battle per se, but just as a prelude to what happened with me and Emmy in the uh, Pokemon showdown, I'll be also there to commentate uh, for the battles that we will see together. So if you guys would like to hear me ramble on about some of the silly shenanigans happening on screen alongside with some of my other buddies, uh, please join us. Learn more about the information of the Silver Wing Rank Cup over at Goggles' Twitter account. Uh, so make sure to go and follow him there over at Goggles. Let me just make sure I got it correctly. Goggle Master 11. So, yes. Oh, we uh, also, we have our first place person for the Silver Wing Ring Cup in the chat, too. Media Nut. Media. Yeah, the yeah. Media Nut right over uh -huh. there. Shout so out to our boy. Channel if you want to check him out, he's great. Indeed. Yay. Uh, but yeah, we love and appreciate all of you. And best of luck to each and every single one of y'all. I wish you nothing more than the best. And for y'all to provide incredible battle scenarios in the battlefield. Uh, so let's get excited for that, ladies and gentlemen. In the chat, of course, if you guys already know who the Masters 8 folks are, let me see what you guys are rooting for. Who is that one person you're going to be rooting for throughout the entire tournament? Is it going to be for Team Tyrone? Team Cosmic? Team Infamous, Nut, etc. Uh, I wish I had the list on me at hand. I complete, I closed it down as mm. I was off trying to open it. <laughs> Shit. Um, but yeah, so once again, best of luck to all the competitors. We appreciate all of you. Uh, team Talon as well. Let's not forget Talon, uh, who just won the recent tournament in the thing. And like we stated before, there will be more tourneys coming really soon over at the champion world discord server so if you guys would like to join in on the fun whether it be hosted by our buddy cosmic or group or any other members within the mod uh scene yeah check it out look forward to it and have yourselves a wonderful time in the server it's been nothing yeah. but greatness all around and uh we hope you guys continue to enjoy uh, the fun shenanigans that'll play throughout the many, many months to come and, of course, into the new year. Uh, with that being said, once again, thank you all to the competitors in the art contest and to those in the Pokemon Showdowns. We appreciate y'all and uh, thank you guys for continuing to add more rubies into my folder collection. <laughs> I love it. Aww. I love it. I absolutely do. I never thought I would get as many. I think I have like almost 100 pictures of ruby, which is incredible Damn. for me. Yeah, Aww. Ruby. Ruby's like like Ruby. I've owned for almost a decade now. That's true. Ruby yeah. is about oh, as wow. old as the KG Prestige name itself. Uh, so to have Ruby be there for so long is uh, nothing more than just a special thing for me. Especially because it's you know a character that I adore so very much that I never thought I would see it continue to grow and become more, I guess, known <laughs> throughout the many years. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you all for your love and support on the Ruby side of things. Uh, and I hope you guys continue to enjoy the silly shenanigans we got for tonight. So, uh, anything else we need to bring up and address, uh, Cosmic, for the server whatsoever uh, at this moment? Uh, nope, just join. We're cool. You're cool. So, so show up. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Show up right now. We have a Discord link, damn it. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, let's go and move on into our next topic then for tonight. Why don't we? 
Uh, Polly, we're going to pass this one on to you, buddy. So, As my brother decides to call me at the worst time. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I will, I will mute because I haven't talked with him, so uh, you go ahead, Polly. All right. Okay. Uh, Polly, this topic is going to now be passed on to you because you are the one that I wanted to, uh, to see this happen. So what do you say, Polly? We go and uh, bring this up then. All right. So, well, uh, yeah, huh? take it away. So, as you know, as you guys might know, if you follow me on Twitter, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to London um, a couple weeks ago with some friends from the Anypoke community um, and attend Worlds. So, I actually, uh, if anybody has any questions about it, I mean, I'd love to share a little bit about my experience. And I did, I gave Kevin some pictures. That doesn't look like a picture I sent you. Oh, but... that's because it isn't. <laughs> I just got that in the meantime, as you were just like setting up for the discussion in hand. Of course, you know. I love that image. Oh, that's great. I'm going to draw the Pokepod OST. I wish, Robzo. Trust me, I wish. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder what would be um, everyone's themes now thinking about it. But anyway, Polly, pass it on to you again. Let me go and sh um, transition over to the other side now. There oh, yeah. So... It was a wonderful experience. Um, obviously, I've been to Worlds before, the first time being with some of us here in the Pokepod. Um, uh, my first time meeting Nessa and Terrell in, in Washington, D.C. But this Worlds... That Worlds was fun, but this Worlds, like, they really just... They really hyped everything up. Like, every corner was like a decal... The convention center, it was at the London Excel Center, it was huge. It just, like, you could really tell that I think they wanted to, they were working on this for such a long time because it was pushed back twice. Because yeah, the, so this uh, was like a boys. super ambitious event, I assume. Yeah, that they just went all out. Um, you know, they had, so right on the screen is the... Uh, well, that's going kind of fast. So they had the cable cars. The oh, London hold on. Cable I'll, cars. I'll slow it down for you. Then. No, no, it's okay. Okay. Um, and that was amazing. Um, I have some more pictures of it anyway. So on each cable car, they had the different types. In fact, I had sent one to Cosmic because one of them had a snubble on it, the fairy type cable Next. car. Um, and it, it took you across the, uh, the river. And it was... Oh, it was so it was so cool, especially at night. I got to ride it at night and then the next day. Um, so we wound up getting the water one, the water type um, cable car, the second time um, we went on it, which was really cool. Uh, I know I'm kind of all over the place, but the pictures are out of order. So I guess I should Wait, just really? say... Because huh? you gave them to me the way they did. I did, I did. I mean, I, I should probably start with saying, obviously I don't want to spend like the next hour on this, but um, I should say that I didn't go to London just for Worlds. I've never been there before, and I really want to travel a little bit. Um, and so I, I spent a week there, about a week beforehand, just seeing the sights, seeing Big Ben, which is on screen right now, and, you know, the double-decker buses. I got my cheeky nando's experience because like apparently that's like a cult following restaurant in the uk and we only have one here in dc and it was delicious so i um uh, no i did not get to meet the queen um that's the only thing we didn't get to see we didn't get to see buckingham palace but we were in the vicinity of like that area um so we saw big ben we saw the london eye uh, we were going to go on the London Eye, but it was for some reason closed at the time that we were there. Um, so we unfortunately didn't get to actually like ride the Ferris wheel. Um, we went to a few other towns. We went to the seaside town called Brighton, which was really cool. We, um, we went like thrift shopping and we celebrated our friend's birthday. We went to a museum. Um, yeah, like a couple of different towns. So the week beforehand, it was uh, honestly packed with just a bunch of like traveling and stuff before Worlds. But obviously, I know you guys are here mostly to hear about the Worlds experience. And it was just, 
it was just awesome being there, you know? Like, just huge convention center, three different matches happening at the same time, lots of seating um, where people could watch. We all played against each other in Sword and Shield. Uh, we did multi-battles against each other. My friends utterly destroyed me. They're very, very good. Um, and I realized I've been playing so much Sword and Shield this week uh, because I realized I really need to uh, build up my competitive team to be able to take them on. So um, I did see Raph. Raph is in a picture... Probably coming up at some point. I don't know when he'll. he'll yeah, be up, I'm not sure when these pictures will show up, but they'll show up how it is. They will show up. Um, but it, yeah, don't worry. Uh, you met a bunch of peeps still throughout. I that whole did. Night. I I met I met some of Raf's friends, which included people like Ace Trainer Liam, which I never in my life thought I would meet him because he's the other Poly World Stan. Um, oh my God. Cerebi, uh, Joe Cerebi was like in the vicinity. I didn't get to meet him personally. I think I think Raph was able to, but um, he was there. He was there while we were watching the Arceus um, special, but they were in a special uh, VIP section. And we were like, what about the Annie Poe community? Like, we're the actual fans here. Like, why don't we get any special spots? Like, we had to sit on the grass, but it was cool. They had, they had the Pikachus. The mascots come out and dance to the Katy Perry electric song. And um, obviously they showed the special, which was dubbed. Yes, Sergi, I didn't see you in the chat. And um, I suffered all the way through London it. London to go and get Goldfarb. I'm so gold sorry farb? for you. <laughs> <laughs> Traveled across the pond to get Goldfarb. Um, yeah. Oh, there's oh the there's, there he is. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. As you He's calling himself worry, the man. Poppy Raph for some reason. Oh, did you yeah. get the other picture? Because I saw another picture that was posted online. There is, there's a picture of me frowning at him, you know, because he's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that picture, that's all of us pulling our switches against each other. And um, so in front of us, I, there's another picture of it, but you can actually see the stage. And the stage was really cool. They had it all set up to look like London, you know, like the Big Ben in the background and like the bridge. And on the stage, they had the three matches going at the same time. So they had Sword and Shield, like, or the, at least the main games. They had the trading card game and they had Pokemon Go, which was, I think, a recent addition, right, to the competitive uh, sphere. Unless I think cool. so, actually. Yeah. yeah. I think it was. Yeah. yeah, because I believe this is also the final year that they're going to host with the uh, Pokken tournament. Mm. Yeah. Right, that's, yes, they had... Uh, maybe it was Pokken then I was thinking about. But I could have sworn... Well, no, they had main Pokemon screens. Pokemon Go too, yeah. Yeah, the three main screens were Pokemon Go, the main games, and the TCG. So... At they all the same at the same time they were all on the stage and there were different people commentating um, on the upstairs pr portion. Like I honestly felt like I was watching an ESPN. Um, now I don't remember too well because when I went to the DC Worlds, you guys would know better than I would, but it didn't really seem as hype. I guess maybe the convention center just wasn't set up as. Uh, extravagantly which you know at the end of the day it's about the people competing and just about you know fun and enjoying pokemon but hey I got here a you could tell yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i was like was the london's um where they had the convention center was it a lot bigger than what the what we went into oh yeah it was huge it was huge like it honestly felt like i was at a con um like uh Everything was kind of all in the same room, whereas I felt like in D.C. It was kind of all in different rooms, if I remember correctly. Like, they had the big one, and then they had the section where we were playing, like, Puzzle League and all that. But then the Pokemon Center... Oh my gosh, I didn't talk about the Pokemon Center. <gasps> uh, yeah. So, oh, do I have any pictures of that? I don't know. But the Pokemon Center honestly blew the DC one, like, out of the water. Like, the DC one was cute, but it was just this one room. It was almost like, kind of like a pop-up shop. 
And I hate to be trashing on the DC one because I, I genuinely. Damn, man, I, had I such guess a our experience time. wasn't worth it then, buddy. No, 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 I loved it. I loved <laughs> okay, it. You know it what was I'm so going much through. fun. I, I'll <laughs> never, I'll never forget that time. Uh, I um, saw a YouTube video for that was someone did the Pokemon Center, and I was like, "Shit, oh, like that thing is huge." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was because that's why I was kind of I wasn't able to answer you because I was like, "I don't." Know what they have there. And so it was they, literally like I was like in a. We were almost like in this like town square. Like they had like pokemon street and like vermilion road or like like they would have different almost like you were actually in a like a square um and we would just went around and we went crazy like honestly i'm like i told my mom when i got home i'm like i'm not telling you how much i spent because i spent a lot but at the same time it's like we figured this is a once in a lifetime experience and you know i just I just wanted to go for it, and, you know, I got myself a nice windbreaker. Like, they had the merch they had was really cool. They had umbrellas and figures and plushies, um, and I got a hoodie. Yeah, it was, uh, for my budget, I should not have been spending that much, but it was very worth it in the end. Um, I guess I could answer some questions. So the flight... There, uh, from where I live, it was a, it was supposed to be about seven hours, but it wound up being six. Oh. On the way back, I believe it was seven. I don't know why. I guess they got an early start going there. Um, so actually, actually, no. Yeah. Hi from uh, hi from the cell phone. It's because you guys uh, going eastward. You were in the jet stream and the jet stream usually is faster depending on how fast the jet streams are running from west to east okay um oh so that picture right up up there with ash is actually a naruto themed ramen restaurant that we went to in um one of the towns we visited a little bit out like kind of on the outskirts of london and or maybe it was in london i don't know but that was really cool because they had, I didn't show the whole video, obviously. I just sent the one picture of Ash. But they had, like, Deku and Todoroki and Dragon Ball characters. Obviously, a bunch of Naruto characters. Um, even Hunter Hunter characters. Like, all these different anime characters, mostly from Shonen, all, like, on the four walls. And it was, it was really, really cool and fun to uh be there and look at that while we ate our ramen so yeah that was a, a nice highlight as well and that was that was before worlds but um we, we had to do that because not necessarily me but the other people in my group are huge naruto fans so that was definitely a must on their london bucket list so yeah um let me see if I let me see any other questions. Yeah, I actually Who have left? a question. So I want to oh, ask okay. you, buddy, a uh, personal question with this one. So yes. obviously with the center, uh, given the bigger size and all, my question to you is what is probably one of the best things you probably got your hands on from that convention? Mm. Like, What was the that prize possession that you found? It's going to be like a memento for you to to describe your experience in the World Championships in London. Honestly, I think it was the windbreaker, the the jacket, because it was just so cool. On like a lot of my other friends um got it. Like I don't know if you guys know Annette from Twitter, a Kilvers, she got it. Um, my friend Nell got it. Like a bunch of us just got this jacket. It was just such good quality. Um, it's a reversible too. It's I don't know if I showed any pictures of me wearing it, but um, it's black on the outside, and then on the inside it's like this hot pink, um, and it says London and has a bunch of like it's like a cool like graphic pattern of Pikachu on it, and I believe on the like patch on like the pocket it says like London or like Pikachu or something like that. So that's probably my biggest prize possession. The other. Would probably be now this exists already on the website. It's not really a, like a world's exclusive, but um, the eight posters of the different the eight different regions, um, which oh. I feel like 
I, I'd seen them online before, but I'm like, uh, I don't know if I have any room. But then I saw them in person, I'm like, oh, I got a cat, though. <laughs> so, yeah, cat, like, so, yeah. Huh? He's like, I, ha- I have room. I'll make room. It's okay. <laughs> oh, I will absolutely make room. Uh, I, my friend Natalie has them, and she did this thing where, like, you know you, like, you put the string, like, you put photos on, like, on a string, and then you kind oh, of yeah. drape them? She yeah. has them around her bed like that, and they look really oh. cool. But I don't know, these, the size of these are a little bit bigger than the one she has, so I think I'm going to have to, like, actually figure out a place in my basement to hang them. Um, also, I mean, I guess the plushies, the world's, the plushies of the Roserade and the Pikachu were really cool. I originally got them for friends, but then I, I'm like, you know, I should really get two for myself as well. <laughs> and just plug them into the bag. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, like, they're as cute, cute. Those plushies. Yeah, I yeah, I got a couple other plushies. The the sitting cuties. It sucks because I saw one Raichu, but I saw it way after, way before TSS. Because I I remember I'd asked you guys, okay, speak now forever, forever hold your peace. Does anybody want anything? TSS said if you see any Raichu merch. And then there was one little Raichu left, but then somebody wound up taking it. And then I also heard that there were no more Zoros left. So I'm like, well, TSS, Kevin, and Nessa are out. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had a feeling. Like... I looked at my bill, I'm just like, oh, we can get this online. But the antenna was there. <laughs> So overall, oh, I guess the best thing to say from this is that you've had just a wonderful experience throughout. And these images and all that stuff truly show as well. I think that's the favorite thing about this whole thing. You guys got an opportunity to uh, to see everything happen and play out and watch new movies and events and all. It must have just yeah. been nothing more than just a, a joyous experience knowing that this convention that's been away for so long has, uh, yeah. has returned. It. I mean, there's a, there's just, like, two more things I want to say. First of all, it was just amazing getting to meet some people for the first time that I had been mutuals with. Um, it's always, and obviously, we've all been through it before, getting to meet each other in person for the first time. But the, the first time you meet, like, somebody new that you've known on the internet, it's always just such a surreal and wonderful experience. So it was really cool getting to meet... Um, those mutuals and friends, including the group I was with, and oh, there's the snubble cosmic. But I sent you that. Um, <laughs> I, love, I love that it was there. It wasn't yeah. in Galar, but it made it on a, a little trolley. <laughs> yeah, no. there, there's something very special about being in London, kind of as this final chapter uh, that we're closing on Sword and Shield, as you know, bittersweet as it is, and it's also. There's something very special about it being the 25th anniversary of the anime um, and just getting to spend it with people who just absolutely love this show and the games as much as I do. Um, we watch, you know, like in the Airbnb, even on the days that like world, we didn't have worlds, we watched episodes, like we watched the Wallace Cup, uh, we watched May and Drew's Canto Grand Festival battle, we talked about our head cannons. we talked about ships, like, we just, it was just so refreshing, I feel like it really kind of rejuvenated, or, like, reminded me of the reason why I love this show so much, and these characters, because the people I, w- I was with, just, you could tell they have so much love for these characters, and so much really good, like, insight um, into their, their stories and their potential stories, you know, that could be told off screen. Um, many of them are fan fiction writers, and like, I just feel like, not to kind of uh, spill tea or like bring any negativity, but just sometimes with the fan, the community as it is right now, there are a lot of different opinions. Obviously, we're going to get into journeys a little bit later, which I'll probably opt out because I didn't see the episode in full, but just a lot of differing opinions right now about like the direction that the show is going in. You know, and sometimes that can be a little bit disenchanting, um, you know, and disappointing, you know, it, like, for, especially for people like me who have loved previous seasons and maybe are not so 
keen on journeys at the moment, you know? But does not mean I'm going to stop watching? No, but, like, basically what I'm saying is it was just kind of getting to talk about the older characters and older generations again and the older episodes just really kind of, like, rekindled my love for this series, and it was just amazing getting to spend that time and talk about it in person with with my friends. So it was a wonderful experience and uh, I'm excited for the next time I get to see them and possibly for the next worlds if I'm able to make enough money to go to Japan. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see indeed, buddy. We'll see. Yay. But uh, I'm very happy. Most importantly, I think the best thing to come out from this, as stated before, is that your experience was a worthwhile one. And I hope you had a fun time, buddy. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so uh, much for letting me talk about it. Hey, listen, you wanted to talk about it last time. We talked a little bit about it uh, during uh, last week's uh, podcast, but mainly it was more focused on the announcements that they had dropped there yeah. uh, with the new features and things happening soon. Uh, but it is nice to now hear a more down-to-earth uh, personal point of view from your, you know, perspective of like just how the event was, how it was mm. with reuniting with friends or meeting friends for the first time, or stuff like that. Like I stated before, wonderful time all around to hear. So, uh, happy to hear everything was a success. And I hope, like yeah. you stated before, it's something that will not stop anytime soon. This year is also going to be wrapping up with a more positive note as well. As we stated before, ANYC is going to be happening yes. uh, later this year. And I'm very mm -hmm. excited to see how that's going to play out. Especially because we don't really know the whole thing about it as of right now. So, fingers crossed that it's also just as good too. Mm. All right. But, yes, uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that indeed. All right. So, uh, last thing I have at least written down for now is something i'm not sure well ness are you here right now buddy i saw in the yeah. chat you were having some issues for some reason but uh yeah i got it fixed though because I, I noticed my avatar got lighting up and i wasn't even talking and then i um then i i decided to see what it was the settings but then i was like maybe i shut off discord and restart it and that did the trick Yay. Yay, so that's good to hear. Now, there's a reason why I uh, mentioned you right now, and that's because of the fact that I want to hear from you about something that caught me by surprise when you told me about it, because I wasn't thinking you wanted to talk about it, but here we are. And I'm genuinely <laughs> curious to hear your thoughts on the matter. Uh, so just to let everybody know, a couple of weeks ago, I believe, uh, a book released uh, from someone named Jeanette McCurdy. A lot of people might know that name. If you guys watched, say, a very popular show back in the day on Nickelodeon called iCarly, uh, she was the young actress that played uh, Sam Puckett, I believe that was her name, on uh, on there. So, we ever since then, I think she had one more series, the actress, which was Sam and Cat, and then after that, uh, the the series came to a close after season one and she dipped uh, and thus the series came to a complete halt and therefore never got a second season. Uh, and now for many years, especially with the iCarly revival that had happened a couple of years ago, we were wondering whether or not Jeanette McCurdy would find herself back in the scene again uh, to go and be a part and play a character named, you know, Sam Puckett once again in the iCarly universe. Uh, she has stated, of course, that she would not, and she still is in close relationships with the actors and actresses, at least as what we're being told. I think in one of the interviews, she came out and said, yeah, it's perfectly fine. What's that noise I hear? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I heard it. I hear it too. I think that might have been Polly's because <laughs> your, okay, well, your avatar well, was lighting up. I was like, what is that noise? Uh, but yeah, so uh, just to uh, clarify once again. Um, yeah, so a couple of years passed by and now she has dropped a book, a very controversial book, at least just from the title alone. And Nessa, you got an opportunity to fully complete it uh, by tonight, actually. Uh, and I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on the matter. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to actually be seeing a book review here on the channel uh, by our buddy Nessa. 
And if anybody else here in the call who has any experiences with the reading of this uh, particular book, or at least have seen the interviews, I've seen a couple of interviews prior to it. I haven't gotten my chance on getting a physical book of this. Uh, But yeah, let me go and actually share the image in question here. This being of the book called I Am Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And as you can see, very controversial book cover all in itself where she's holding, I think, the vase of where she would be. Uh, And yeah, this is interesting. So, Nessa, I'm going to now pass this all on to you because you've read the 300 plus page novel. And I want to also take this as an opportunity as well to give people a heads up because... Nessa, you said that there are some things in here that can get very, very dark, if I'm correct. Yes, uh, definitely. I, I could probably, I probably have like a trigger warning because they're in this book, they definitely talk about EDs. Um, they talked about some harassment stuff, kind of like pretty, it was like pretty dark in this book. And then even from like, we're going far from like, these really creepy things from like, from the director um, that, 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 um, that I Carly and Sam and Cat. So it was I was quite surprised when I was reading this book. It's like I had to put the book down though because it actually pretty hit me hard because I was just like I, I was like I can't believe she went through all that. And she is such a strong woman and able to like bounce back from everything she gone through. And but it took her a while to figure all that out. So um so I'll I'll probably gonna go off like a couple of, like strong strong things that hit me pretty um pretty much yeah uh, so actually the first- um oh. I'm sorry Nessa to interrupt yeah. I just want to at least give people an idea of what the book is about real quick I actually got a synopsis if you don't mind I'll read this real sure. quick and then I'll pass it to you so that way more people can get set up to what to expect. Gotcha. Uh, your topic at hand. So uh, this is something I got from Amazon real quick. Allow me to read the excerpt. Once again, as Nessa stated, uh, this is a bit of a trigger warning. It is doing really well right now for obvious reasons, but here, allow me to read this here. Jeanette McCurdy was six years old when she had her first acting audition. Her mother's dream was for her only daughter to become a star and Jeanette would do anything to make her mother happy. So she went along with what mom called calorie restriction, eating little and weighing herself five times a day. She endured extensive at-home makeovers while mom chided, your eyelashes are invisible, okay? You think Dakota Fanning doesn't tint hers? She was even showered by mom until age 16 while sharing her diaries, email, and all her income. In I'm Glad My Mom Died, Jeanette recounts all this in unflinching detail just as she chronicles what happens when the dream finally comes true. Cast in a new Nickelodeon series called iCarly, she is thrust into fame, though mom is ecstatic, emailing fan club moderators and getting on a first name basis with the paparazzi. Hi Gail, Jeanette is riddled with anxiety, shame, and self-loathing which manifest into eating disorders, addiction, and a series of unhealthy relationships. These issues only get worse when, soon after taking the lead in the iCarly spinoff, Sam and Cat, alongside Ariana Grande, her mother dies of cancer. Finally, after discovering what After discovering therapy and quitting acting, Jeanette embarks on recovery and decides for the first time in her life what she really wants. Told with refreshing candor and dark humor, I'm Glad My Mom Died is an inspiring story of resilience, independence, and the joy of shampooing your own hair. And so far, as stated before, it is the number one New York Times bestseller and the number one international bestseller uh, book out there. So, uh, Nessa, with all that being said and out of the way, let us now take this chance to hear your review on I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette sure. McCurdy. I'm kind of cracking up because this office said a lot of the stuff that's uh, that was in the book. So, uh, so that saved me some time. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like to read these things a heads up just to kind of like give people an idea. Because just to throw somebody into a topic would be absolutely horrifying. So to just uh-huh. get them an, a little eased into what we're going to be talking about or more 
to your mm -hmm. uh, your review on it, uh, it's a good idea to just give people a heads up on that. So now that that's out of the way, yeah, uh, Nessa, take yep. it away, pal. All right. So yeah, this book was very, very interesting. It was actually uh, like one of the, it's actually a very easy read. So it's like she kind of cut up the chapters pretty short. Like some of them are like even just one page. So it's very easy to uh, to read. And it's and then there's like a lot of humor that she puts in into her, her book. As like in the in the beginning, it wasn't as bad. It was actually a little bit slower. But once we finally hit to the part when she got into Ari Carly, um, it started to get quite darker. And then just just the tone of her um how she was describing these events, it was getting darker and darker. And then she started like was getting angry and angrier like as she got older so it was like it was like quite it was like interesting i was able to grasp into like how like when she was like really vulnerable to like to when the, at the time what like she was she explained herself about ariana and also in the book she found out the dad that she thought it was her dad wasn't her dad finds oh out after God. she died yeah <laughs> yeah so something like her mom decided to keep them but i'm gonna go on to the topics that really jumped out it to me the one that the first time that I had to put the book down and I had to like reflect from what I just read was she when was mentioned was a calorie restriction that I was like shocked like I guess because like Jeanette was still like this is she was only 10 11 years old at the time her mom and like she because she in, the, in her book she panicked saying like oh my god like I'm hitting purity and then she wanted to slow down purity and then her her mom was the one who just suggested like oh I have a secret like that don't tell anybody like she basically introduced her into the calorie restriction which uh which introduces the Jeanette to the ED and I was just horrified I was like what and so I, like she so she she started on Jeanette like on a thousand calorie diet and then. And then to, just to please her mom, because basically she didn't know any, anything better as a kid, she, she would she'd be like, look, mommy, I ate half the meals or like keep cutting out like or I didn't eat this or this is fattening or it's like she, she was like she was doing anything to please her mom. But from what I read, I, was, I had to put it down because I'm just like, I can't believe someone would do that. And regarding about her mom in general, her mom was in was crazy. Just flat out crazy. And some of the things like she like it took years until after she died that she was being super manipulative from her mom. She um at, at one point, I guess because she wanted to watch her figure, she tried to slow her down from growing up. She also meant she was also got into like showering her until she was like 18, 17, 18. And then she did it to her brothers, too, saying like, oh, and then these weird medical exams that that her mom performed saying like, oh, this is just to see I don't have cancer because her mom was like was battling cancer at the time. And they were afraid that her um, that readmission is going to be coming back for her. So it was I was just like, oh, my God. And basically she was the breadwinner. She was the one making all the money. So like not her dad, none of her um, and her grandpa, her grandpa and her grandma just made like money on the side, but not a, just barely to hold on. but. But then basically her mom depended on Jeanette for all, all her um, acting money to pay the bills. So it so it explains why she had like such a crappy life. So that I was just like, wow. Um, the next part I also wanted to mention too is like she mentioned quite a bit of an iCarly and then she referred Dan Schneider as the creator. So she never flat out said his name. He is like another person. <laughs> another person i was just like wow and it seems like him dan schneider being like a super top and some of the things he was so, like so creepy he also manipulated children as well like uh early in the book he did mention that sam or i'm sorry Jeanette was supposed to have her own show so instead of sam a cat we were supposed to get just just puck it regarding her character so that was yeah. a pitch that was like a couple years um before that um we found out about Santa B. Cat. So she, so her, like, hearing that, like, Jeanette is, uh, was somewhat excited. Her mom's is sad, of course, because she's like, she's like, oh my gosh, she's a star. She's a star. But no, she was robbed. And it also, Dick Schreiner promised Jeanette she would get to direct an episode. So that was the whole time thing why, like, that was, like, part of her contract. But then Santa Cat goes another, another, another into can of worms. So I'll go there in a sec, but 
but that she yeah she was problems her own show from from the beginning so i i would have loved seeing just puck it and then the original plot line was like yeah she was supposed to be like a delinquent turned into a school counselor so that was the premise of the show originally but no we never got that and then also, she meant went into like how Stan Schneider would throw these tangents and tantrums on the children. So then, I guess if they mess up, he actually fired six year olds for messing up their lines. And also, like they had to please them. So, they, so if they did uh, whatever, uh, if they don't get what, uh, like she ended up describing about the, I don't know if you guys remember from the iCarly episode when Freddie and Sam kissed. She, yeah. this, yes, yes. yeah. <laughs> So she described that was like super awkward for her, for her for her first kiss, and then was with a co-star, and then she was having a hard time getting it right. But then Dan Schneider was like stepping in, saying, "No, you're not doing this. Not, you're not. You're not. You're in an awkward angle." Like she couldn't quite understand oh what God. she means. Yeah, like yelling at her, and so it's like kind of like traumatizing for her because she was like because he kept yelling at her because she's not getting the the perfect angle for the uh, for the kiss. And so, and then they tried and tried, like, I think seven takes before they finally got it, but it wasn't the perfect take that Dan wanted. So she was, like, saying in her in experience, like, she she was just like, no, it's like, she was, she was definitely traumatized. And another, and another part, too, is, like, she mentioned her friendship with Miranda Cosgrove, the, the, um, Carly from I, I Carly. She mentioned that her mom was trying saying that she can't be friends with Miranda because she's not Mormon and follows Jesus. So her mom was kind of like, no, you can't befriend this bitch because no, because she doesn't follow Jesus, basically. That was her reasoning. Mm. She also, yeah. she was, yeah, so she was kind of, she was trying to keep them apart, but then they did find a way and they got along really well. And then she does say that Miranda's like one of her biggest friends in her life than that that she was like one of the few who did stay up uh, for for years That's so good. there yeah so there's just she's a big supporter of her like she's openly but in interviews talking about how great Jeanette is yeah, oh, yeah. they seem very close like even stuff like i've read like throughout the like stuff i've heard in terms of interviews and stuff they're still very close even though like they both gone their own like separate ways but they still like look out for each other when here mm -hmm. and there so it's it's nice yeah, I know. I, yeah, for sure. I kind of, I was like, man, I was like, I'm so glad that she like definitely got along with her. And then she, and, and then she kind of, Jeanette goes a little bit more tangents about her relationships too. So that was another thing I want to talk about. One of her first boyfriends, like, I didn't know she had a boyfriend at that age. So she was like 18, 19. And then her first relationship, she had to hide from her mom because this guy that she was dating was like about 14 years older than her. Oh, so, wow. oh my yeah. god, yeah, <laughs> and so then, obvious for obvious reasons, she was going behind her mom's back, and then her mom was catching on that she was lying behind her back, and her relationship was exposed with TMZ because they said they went to Hawaii, and the paparazzi uh, got her pics, and that's how her mom found out. So her mom just went on a tyrant like. It's like, you ungrateful viewer. She started like going off on her. Like what uh cause she she saved all the text messages, so she was able to get exactly what um her mom said. But the guy that she was dating though basically was in a relationship and ends up breaking up his girlfriend to be with her. So hmm. I was just like shit. <laughs> I was just like, wow. Hmm. And then then she had a couple other boyfriends afterwards. And then she and, and then her last boyfriend that was mentioned in her um turns out like he kind of like in the beginning was the dreamy guy and the perfect guy that that they're into so they had so much in common, but then turns out like he ended up going crazy where he was trying to push Jeanette to into religion. And she was just like, Are you okay, man? And and then he's and then he was like, I don't want to have sex anymore. And like she was just kind of like, What? And it turns out he was a sexual frantic, so he kind of was a little yeah crazy. So they had to um, so they had to get him help. But it was just like it's just like some of their relationships just like mm -hmm. she didn't really have like the best relationship. And I'm gonna go for I'm just I'll talk one more topic. And the last topic I want to talk about was regarding Ariana Grande. Oh boy. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
So, I thought interviews on this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, go, go now. Yeah, go now. Yeah, I, I got this book and only read this section because of how really? much I was really? invested in this. Oh, Ariana Grande. She does not like her. She does Absolutely. not like her. I actually posted on my Instagram like a couple of nights ago of, of the, regarding that page, and then the way that she described Ariana, it was I was just like, damn. I was like, and then it, it was quite obvious, like sh- like from Dad alone though, is like because I guess around the time when they filmed Sam and Cat, um, Ariana was able to miss a lot of the. the the rehearsals and show and tapings because she was growing into the pop star. So this was like 2013. And I don't know if that's when Ariana became big at that time. So then she was more focused with her music career. And then, and then Jeanette would describe that. I have to miss um, like other TV offers and everything because, um, because they want her to be in it. So basically Jeanette was actually more committed. And then Ariana gets to skip everything. And then also the other thing, too, is like she mentioned that Ariana was more well off. So then like and so she's she came from a wealthy family already. And then the and then also the the way she was like talking about how she's so damn ditzy and then just doesn't care. Um, Let me see if I can find a chapter in here really quick, because I kind of want to I kind of want to read it. And I was just kind of like, oh, my goodness. It was just like (laughs) I just got to I was just cracking up like. It's just like so crazy here. See. Like I remember like way back when when Sam and Cat was still going on and there was like the whole controversy too of like them not being paid the same and that's why like Jeanette didn't end up not going to like the award shows or something with like the kids' choice awards oh, or something like I, that. Oh regarding oh regarding about that actually, it, it wasn't that reason. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, that's what I found really interesting. So it that wasn't the reason at all. That wasn't the, re- that wasn't yeah. the reason though. The reason why, um, and the reason why, like, it, it, they end up turning on 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 Jeanette McCurdy because, like, so after Sam and Cat ended, she was basically was was given hush money for not to talk about um about her experience with Nickelodeon, and she turned it down obviously because they were going to give her three hundred thousand dollars if she didn't if she kept quiet and and then and so because so the real reason why sam and cat was canceled it wasn't because of because oh, oh she made more money than the other it was because um the reason to be um the reason it was because there was a sexual a- accusation against uh jan schneider yeah so that was a reason why that they yeah so that show got canceled so i was just kind of like wow <laughs> Just wow! I thought it was like really stupid too. It was like I was like, "Why are you saying that? I don't get it." But I was like, ah, "Of course not." I can't find a damn chapter because when I'm looking for it, because I wanted to read that portion. And of... oh, here it is! I found it! I found it! I found it! Um, okay, I found this. So it's chapter it's chapter fifty eight that she says this. Um, so so this was uh, so I'll just read a snippet really quick. She says, I tried to calm myself down by thinking the whole situation through. Okay, fine. Maybe they couldn't let me shoot the movies because they would have have write me out of episodes completely. Whereas for my co-star, they let her do her music obligations because she was just missing rehearsal days and parts of shoot days, but not entire weeks. Then this week happened. The week I was told Ariana would not be here at all. And that's and they would write around her absence this episode by having her character be locked in the box. Oh. Are you kidding me? So I have to turn down movies while Ariana's off whistle Tony at the Billboard Music Awards? Fuck this. There was a time when I took thanks for being such a good sport comment to a true compliment. I took pride with it. Mom always taught me to be the one growing up, always wanted me to be the one, and I booked more roles and built a good reputation to help my acting career grow. So I was like one. I knew I was doing something right. Yep, I'm a good sport. I'm a good egg. I the good one the one who's not difficult the teacher's pet but now i'm over it i became a bitter person and i resigned to that fa- fact i can't change my circumstances so why you're trying to um uh, change into who i be, uh, come as a result of them i am done being a good sport i resent being a good sport if it wasn't a good sport to begin with i wouldn't be this predicament in the first place i wouldn't be in the shitty show saying these shitty lines on the shitty set with the shitty hairstyle Maybe my life wasn't entirely different right now. I fantasize about being different. But it's not different. It's this. This is what it is. Ariana misses work in pursuit of her music career while I act in a box. I'm pissed about it. And I'm pissed at her. Jealous of her. 
and then that's like and then the reason she did it, yeah and then she mentioned about her like growing up from Boca, Boca Rota in Florida which is an incredibly wealthy town she has the Gucci bags, fancy vacation, Chanel outfits. So. And then she also mentioned about that she was supposed to have her own show, but then they decided, like, oh, no, we're going to do the Sam and Cat, like, put them together. So she hated that she didn't get her own show. And then also Ariana at the time was in her, where she was popping up every 30 under 30 uh, magazines. And then she kind of, like, off, often compare herself to Ariana with her career, where she, Ariana's going to to go on these big career hikes and everything, and then Jeanette's like, oh, I'm just doing some, like, advertisement for Walmart. Um, what's it called again? Rebecca Bonbon. So, yeah, she she was just pissed at her. But, yeah, that was, I was just like, wow. And then also oh, that, like, yeah, that was this treatment that she had over her, but, yeah, I was just like, damn. <laughs> but, but, yeah, after, after Sam and Canto, uh, Jeanette did get had did went in a downward spiral where she was she became an alcoholic. Her ED got worse. Like she was throwing up actually quite a lot after she ate. So, but then she did she did get better from from the end of the story. So I'm happy for her. But yeah, it's, there's just a lot a lot that happened. And I'm just like, I was just like, wow, I I couldn't put the book down. That's how that's how much I loved it. And I'm so glad she's telling her truth. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have yeah. to ask then at this point, uh, what is it that you would give as like a rating for this book? Just uh, out of everything that you've read so far, like how would you rate this book, and would you highly recommend it for others out there to give a read? I definitely highly recommend it. I probably would give this like a ten out of ten because I didn't, I didn't think I would love this book so much, and I. I feel like if also I think I, I feel like you should read this book with the uh if you have a strong mindset. So if you're kind of triggered by like EDs and also like uh, addiction or anything like that, it probably might be difficult to read. So they that's why they kept warning people. But otherwise, it's it's like really good. And then it, it just made me f look at Jeanette in a different light. And then now I probably cannot see her the same after like iCarly now because it's like. It, I'm just like I can't believe she went through all that, and it's just mm. like wow. Honestly, like I think any Nickelodeon shows, I can't look at them the same after knowing like everything that's gone on, especially with like mm. the director, especially like with Jeanette and everything. Even like the iCarly reboot and stuff, like it just it just didn't seem right. It just didn't seem respectful, even despite them doing it like, without Jeanette, and they were like very much trying to push her to come back. Um, but like. I just felt, it, honestly, all these, like, shows that existed, knowing now the, like, the truth of what happened behind it, it just doesn't feel right. And, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, it's feel like there's, like, a scar there that's just not going to go away. And, honestly, like, it it's starting to heal now, but, it I don't know, it just, it let it heal properly, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like, I've, I've watched clips of, like, Dan Schneider being really creepy behind the scenes, and, like, like, Ariana, like, is, like, kind of quickly pulling uh, down her skirt in one scene when he, like, came over. There's one where Jeanette is, like, kind of, like, backs away. And then there's, like, stuff with the the Amanda show with Amanda Bynes when they were, like, in a hot tub or something. Like, it's it all seems a little strange at this point when you kind of all put the pieces together. And I don't know what's going to happen, but... Not that I wish anything bad on anybody, but obviously, like... I don't know if this guy did some weird stuff. Like, it should probably be brought to to light so that you know it doesn't happen to anybody in the future. And that's, I just, I just feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, huh? but you know that that's why these books were made. That's why sometimes people have to come out and start talking about their past because this is the thing that they would need to push that message forward in hopes that mm -hmm. things will come to results with. Targeting yeah, guys, the, the person. Yeah, and um, putting to answer. To oh, I was gonna answer one of his questions. I feel like yes, they for regarding about the Nickelodeon higher ups. Actually, Dan Schneider was the like uh, top producer, so he was actually the top chain. And then I guess they had like a down chain, so he was actually one of the higher ups. So I th I'm pretty sure they were well aware because I was like, why would they give Jeanette hush money to for not to speak any of the experience? And I'm pretty sure Ariana Grande probably took the money because. She doesn't really talk about her experience at Nickelodeon. 
So mm. I'm I'm pretty sure they're they're aware. And I I believe Dan Schneider is no longer with Nickelodeon. They I I believe they he's fired not. him. He's not. But he, there's he's actually been there's, gone. <laughs> yeah. There's currently been a lot of protesting with Nickelodeon, and actually former stars have been coming to the protest. Uh, so I know the most recent one was from Zoe 101. Uh, mm-hmm. The original best friend on the show, the girl. Uh, oh, oh, I think um, I know who you're talking her about. Her name is Alexa in real life. I've heard a real name in the show. But uh, she's been going t- in front of Nickelodeon Studios with signs protesting that Nickelodeon didn't protect her against Dan Schneider. Um, and then I know Victoria Justice has tweeted out stuff now. Um, and also, even like if you look at. Like, there was always something weird with Ariana, which is why, actually, like, when I said I, I bought the book specifically to read that, because I've never actually been really that big of a fan of Ariana Grande. Don't come for me, people. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I it's because, like, see, I w- I've always been a big fan of iCarly. I was a fan of Victorious. Um, and, I mean, I never really liked Victoria Justice, but I always thought it was weird that everyone was blaming her for the show getting canceled when it was really, it wasn't because of Victoria Justice. It yeah. was more because Ariana was becoming like this giant superstar. And then they gave her a TV show and obviously she would not have time for it if she's becoming this giant star. And then what was happening with uh, Victoria Justice was she was being harassed by paparazzi saying that she was the blame of Victoria's ending and she's like no it wasn't me it wasn't me I didn't do it I didn't have any say and then the same thing was happening with Jeanette McCurdy when Sam and Kat ended where everyone was blaming her and she's like no it wasn't me I, I she's like I, I I'm not involved with the cancellation of it and then both of them at one point have been like speak to Ariana instead because it's all it was all Ariana. Well, yeah. I heard about that too because I was just like, oh man. And then it, just it was like toxic. It, it's just toxic. Like on it, that's why I bet like there's a big scar and that needs to be like healed and like now it's like starting everything's like starting to come out if that makes any sense in terms of like what actually happened. But yeah, even for Ariana Grande too, like I agree with that whole thing. It's just like it, it's kind of like she skated under the rug while everything was going on and other people were taking blame for stuff they didn't deserve and she was kind of just there I guess like becoming bigger and bigger <laughs> but I honestly I don't know why they made Sam and Kat a thing like I know uh, Nessa you were bringing up too that she that originally Jeanette McCurdy was supposed to have her own show that would have made a lot more sense given like how her story ended in iCarly because she just drives off right so that would have mm-hmm. made more sense if she drives off because she's going to find herself and then she ends up in like the plot for her own show that would have made a lot more sense than her uh, I think becoming a babysitting service with cat. Yeah. What sense did that make at all? Like what? And the show wasn't even that good. So, Ew, it's, like, it sucks. No. It was oh so bad. Indeed. But did you I, guys have you guys seen the reboot for iCarly? Because yes, I have. They, I have. they don't they don't even acknowledge Sam that Sam and Kat existed. So it's Sam's character. They wrote they obviously she's not in the show because Jim is not acting anymore, but the reasoning why Sam is not on the show is because she joined the biker gang that she left with at the end of iCarly. Yeah. Which made mm-hmm. no yeah. So that completely rules out Sam and Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> That's... Which I approve, honestly. Yeah, yeah, fine with that. <laughs> yeah but uh, uh you know, I'm very the one thing I will say I'm very grateful though is the iCarly cast are genuinely in all good terms. I think that's the most important yeah. thing to bank out of this. Yeah. With Jeanette that's McCurdy true. and uh, Miranda Cosgrove. Yeah. They actually do have a genuine relationship with each other. Uh, and I think that's the best thing to get out from this uh, from this book. Yeah. You know, that there are... Sure, there's been a lot of spiraling going downwards and all that. But there have been moments of hope and moments of positivity in her life. And things like that with Miranda was probably what she needed the most. And thankfully, uh, she still is with good terms with Miranda and with the rest of the cast of High Carly. Yeah. She did I don't she also mentioned other oh and one more thing with the book. She mentioned that um Dan Schneider actually pitted against both shows. So she said that she, there was always against iCarly versus a victorious gang. And so she did mention that like Dan Schneider uh gave her first sip of alcohol. Because <laughs> Yeah, because uh, because they uh, I guess they're too wholesome, according to him. So they say, "Oh, drink some liquor to to loosen it up and be more on edge." And it turns out, I guess the victorious cast often did drink because I think one of the uh, one of the actors actually did come out and saying he doesn't even remember the filming of the show. Um, who played uh, 
it was uh, Jade's uh, boyfriend. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. That makes okay. so much sense. Yes. <laughs> oh, <Jack. laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought, he, I thought he was high all the time. He always Same. was known to me. No, and no, 100%. Because, he, because Dan Schneider gave him a freaking alcohol to them. Oh, it makes shit. so much sense. Wow. <laughs> it all comes together. Shit. <laughs> yes. So that, that's, yeah, because I guess iCarly's game, they're all too wholesome, so they don't drink. But then he was like, no, she can sip. So, and then she was, she was like, no. And then she also said, is this, this is illegal too. Because she's like, she's a minor at that point. But yeah, I was like, Sorry, I had, to, I had to bring it up, though, but yeah, I forgot to add it. <laughs> All right. No, 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 understandable. And uh, thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts on the book, and thank you for allowing us to at least learn more about the history of Jeanette McCurdy. Uh, and I hope people took this opportunity to hear Ness's review and also the opinions of others here in this call, uh, their take on the, the story and just pretty much uh, the... The, the history behind Jeanette McCurdy's life and you know uh, like we said before only just can hope for the best for her she seems to be moving forward she seems to know what she wants to do now and uh, she seems to be glad that her mother died so I mean yeah happiness all around I think I guess I'm not really sure but uh, like I said positivity uh, it seems is moving her way I'm very grateful that a lot of people and I mean it a lot of people are pushing this book forward as well uh, you see it in interviews you see it in reviews you see it in YouTube uh, algorithms and all that stuff it's it's genuinely awesome to see that for her uh, so I hope people if you haven't had an opportunity to read this book uh, thanks to Ness's recommendation I feel you might uh, get a good kick out of reading the the story of Jeanette McCurdy's life uh, uh, through that this is, book. That is, we could get your hands on it because I'm hearing reports that it's been sold out everywhere. Oh hell yeah! Oh, it beautiful. is absolute. It was so tough to get some. I I shit you not. Somebody went out of their way to buy the book, but they didn't realize that they didn't buy a book of "I'm glad my mom died." They bought a notebook of "I'm glad my mom died." Oh no! So <laughs> they bought a notebook that has the cover of "I'm glad my mom died" on it, and then when okay. she opened the book, it was literally just a. <laughs> just a notebook, a notebook to write stuff on and i'm like damn oh my God. okay not gonna lie i did something similar when i was little you know like high school musical you know like cds right yeah so like i thought i bought the like this the album right like for the second high school musical and i ended up just buying an album that had the first song only so when <laughs> i went home <laughs> and i played that and i pressed next it just played. What time is it? <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Well, uh, you know, you know, you know. That actually, that actually reminds me of. Um, there, there actually is a uh, anime, an anime single that was released um, for the um, for the series Shakugan no Shana, the original Shakugan no Shana, and it's. Um, and I'm trying to find what the hell the song was because. Um, it was by the same singer who did um, Zankoku no Tenchi no Teze from uh, Evangelion. And why is my brother calling me again? Why? Fuck it. Because I was just there. Um, <laughs> Jesus Shaka Christ. No Shano. Hold on. Um, uh, because, it, because it was a single. Okay. So it was um, it was uh, Yoake Umareta um, um, Kuru Shoujo, which is, I believe, the first opening. And on every single, and, and um, the publishing company actually made an error with the disc because the vocal, the track one, which is the vocal track, um, it just ends abruptly. And like you hear a, and then you hear a click and then it goes to the next track. And the karaoke track does not have this problem, but on, but on that, but on every single pressing of the CD, it had that same problem. So it was a mastering issue. Really? Yes. Damn. So, 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 um, from a, from a standpoint, there is no, uh, uh, the only thing I would say is I'm hoping that if it's on like Spotify or freaking Deezer or freaking, um, title, maybe finally I'll be able to listen to the whole fucking ending of the track after like fucking 16 years. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that's the case. And actually, that, that thank you for reminding me on that. I'm going to go check that while we uh, get into the next topic. All right. I'm going to go and look for this. Hold on. Jeanette McCurdy book, Where to Get My Hands On Right Now. I'm pretty sure it's available to get your hands on right now. You could probably get it. You could probably get it at, um, 
uh, strand books on freaking in, in the village. Uh, well, I went to go and get it. My it tells me that I get the audio CD, not the actual book itself. So the I can buy check, the, check, a, uh, check like Strand Books. Mm -hmm. on, and like, let me, and let like, me take uh, a look. Union let me, Square, like Union Square. It's on like Twelfth Street. Yeah, let's see. Okay, I'm um, I'm glad my mom died. It's actually wait, it's free, huh? On okay. uh, audiobook at least. <laughs> so there yeah. you go. Uh, but no, it's nowhere to be seen on Amazon, for example. I'm glad I'm on that. <laughs> it's so weird to say that, though, as is. Um, I got lucky before I think it, it finally pulled out because I bought the book after it came out. So I bought. I, I was actually um, still at the, of the social media and everything, but I was hearing, the, the, I was watching the interviews of uh, Jeanette talking about her book. So I'm like, how did I get this book? So yeah. I, I kind of I got lucky at that time, but it, it did bl it did blow up though. I, I think it definitely blew up. All right, let like, me see. I'm gonna read it, low key. I think I'm because like usually I do like audiobooks because I can just drive and listen to something, <laughs> so I can listen yeah. to yeah. this. I think the ebooks. I think if you buy the ebook, like the Kindle version, I think you might be able to get that. Easily. Yeah, yeah, but I like if I, I want to get I the got physical mine from copy. Books a million. I got mine from Books a Million. They had it in stock. So oh, there we go. I went to go to Barnes and Nobles just to check. I wrote down the book and I put a distance for 100 miles. Okay. Uh -huh. Every single store has not in stock in store. Well, All shit. the way down to like Center Valley Parkway State or wherever that is in Center Valley, Pennsylvania. Damn. Not in New Jersey, not in New York, not in yeah, Pennsylvania. Just there's not in New Jersey. <laughs> it ain't. Not in Connecticut as well, it says here. Jesus Christ. I am I am speechless by this. That is absolutely insane. Well, that just means I got to go and figure out where I can get my physical copy of it. If I do. Uh, and I do hope that it... You know, I, I will still support the, um, the digital release too. Like I bought many digital physicals so if i have to read the digital version first before i get my physical copy i'll be more than happy to because i wish to also support the the creator behind this Jeanette. so nothing but re mad love and mad respect throughout the way so yeah it's still in stock at books a million on their website books a million let me see <laughs> oh nice yeah yeah bam exclamation point oh is that what it is bam mm -hmm. Okay. How the hell does BAM have it? Does nobody know what BAM is, I guess? Nobody the goes BAM. there, that's why. <laughs> Back in stock online, it says, let's go. Yeah, that's where I got my copy. Oh, wow. $24. No, that makes make sense. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that, that, that. For, what? Spin the chance to win? Let me spin right now. Watch him win. Well, I don't know what Free I got. Copy. Now, let me see. I, I spin, I spin. 15% off. Yo, let's go. It All right, I activate offer now. Uh, okay, so yeah, I see it here. It's available for stock. Uh, there is no pickup anywhere around here, though, sadly. So I, I will have to buy this uh, and ship it to my way. Anyway, so yeah, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, all right, so I don't think we have anything else left of topics to talk about tonight, but we do have a big crowd. So it only feels appropriate that we take oh. a heads up right now uh, <laughs> to go and jump into this. <laughs> Okay, so Yoko Takahashi's official channel mm -hmm. and, and the song from Shaka and Oshana, the, the version that they uploaded is still the version that's fucking broken. So the, so, the, so the fucking full version of the song is still fucking broken after all these years. I didn't even bother to fucking fix it. That is nice. That is great. That is, that is amazing. So, yeah, that's fucked. So the only so the only version with vocals that will be will have a clean ending is the fucking TV version. That fucking sucks. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> hey, oh my we God. learn something new every day, don't we? Yes, we do. All righty then. So, ladies and gents, we're gonna take this. What is that noise? We're gonna take this chance to go and talk about the uh, the latest episode of PM Twenty Nineteen. What do you guys say? I think it's. I think the noise is me because there's crickets loudly chirping. Oh no! Wait, that's <laughs> crickets. I thought yes. your fan I was know. on. I think it's a. It's my fan as well. I have multiple fans on. There's no air conditioning in my room. Yeah, it's a long story. But I'm probably gonna hop out anyway. Just. Is, uh, As you already yeah, said before, journeys. you clearly okay. watched the episode of Journeys. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah let's go hopefully that. <laughs> next week is better. Fingers crossed. But anyway, 
Thank uh, you. Give, give your give your yeah. prediction score. How about that? Uh, five. Without having any context, what what would you say? Five. Five. All I'm right. So high. That is very, okay. very low. Anything's better than this week. The end. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. First off, once again, buddy, thank mm. you for hopping on through and sharing your experiences about Worlds. We of really course. do appreciate it. And uh, mm. we hope to hear from you again real soon. All right, buddy? Yes. All See right. you all Bye. next week. All right, then. Bye. You Have take nice care, buddy. Bye-bye. Night. All right, so we're going to go and take this opportunity now as well to go and help Nessa get back on the table, on the couch here. So let's go and oh take gosh. care of that real quick. We can over. sit down. Yeah, so oh she can God. sit down. Let's Yay. go and move over here. <laughs> Come in the He's entrance of stage her one. dominance with the book. Yeah, for real. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go and uh, let's fix that right now. There we go. Oh, my gosh, sit next to Emmy. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right. So I'll go fix that up. Uh, let me also take care of the text as well here, too, because we don't need this right now. I think we're, we should be good now uh, to take care of that and get to this. There we go. So uh, let us now get ourselves ready for tonight's topic. Why don't we, ladies and gentlemen? Tonight is going to be wrapping up now with the discussion on the latest episode of PM 2019. We hope you guys enjoyed the Bullshit Hour uh, throughout the session tonight. It was a lot of fun hearing all these different varieties of things just going out tonight. I think it was one of the more variety-based <laughs> sessions we've had in a while. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. So let's go and wrap things up and see if uh, that variety of opinions will also continue to consist with us here uh, in this episode portion titled The Semifinals 1. Sweep. So allow me to go and read an excerpt here of the episode in hand. And then, of course, we will then begin our discussion for tonight. So what exactly is the semifinals one sweep? It's time for the semifinal. Wow, my dog is clearly very happy with that squeaky toy. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dog, why are you so happy for? Hold up a second. Oh, she's OK. There we go. I'll leave you be, buddy. Today's episode is squeak, 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 squeak. Okay, now let's actually get to the review at hand. It's time for the semifinals in the Masters Tournament. With Diantha facing Leon and Ash facing Cynthia, Ash decides to do some training before the match who he meets up with Cynthia, who tells him how she first met her partner Pokemon or her partner Garchomp. Meanwhile, the match between Diantha and Leon is due to start. Who will emerge victorious? All right. And now, let us discuss. Okay. <laughs> the puppy doesn't want for KG to stress himself. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh. good. We're not going to have a Friday experience. Let's go with that. Uh, so, our guest of the week, our buddy Cosmic. Hello. Uh, would Hi. you like to go and kick things off for tonight's review then? Why don't we? Um, sure. Unless Emmy has to go out early. I don't no, know. No, no, no. Go. No, oh, but, okay. uh, I'm pretty confident with the times we should be fine. I'll, I'll say right now, it'll be, I think, uh, Cosmic, then Emmy, then Nessa, and then TSS. You normally like going last for these things, don't you, right? That is correct. All right, so that I got the correct okay. format. All right, there you go. Cool. So let us begin. Cosmic, take it away, buddy. Okay. So, all right, I actually rewatched the episode, and uh, I liked it more than the time I watched it with the community. So my review actually like rating actually went up on the episode. Um, so like at the beginning of it, I really did enjoy the fact that project Mew is included. Um, I know that project Mew is going to be taken after Ash and Cynthia because the titles were already revealed, but um, I like the fact that they did that because that actually leads it to a transition unlike what they did with Chloe where it's just like, hey, let's just throw this episode randomly during the Bastards 8 tournament that doesn't even have relevance to Ash at this time. Um, so by having that reference at the very beginning of the episode, I thought was really smart because that'll make it a little bit easier and more believable and less annoying when that happens. Um, then after that, when it went to the training episode, I thought that was cool to see. I always like to see when they train because it's so rare in this series that they're training, even though they're all overly powered. So they're clearly doing it a lot. Um, but the part I actually really liked the most was Garchomp. Uh, I really liked the massage thing because, like, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool how her idea of preparing a Pokemon for battle was massaged. And I'm kind of curious what she does with the other Pokemon because... She like was doing it to Garchomp, but like I would imagine she probably does similar stuff to like Gastrodon and 
uh, Roserade and stuff like that because like it would be weird if she did one, not the other. Um, in regards to the kids, uh, yeah, Vic and Toria, yeah, um, okay. I know that their name is Victoria, but unlike Victoria Justice and Victoria's, they did not make it shine. I was not a fan. <laughs> they were annoying. I mean, were they cute? Yeah, I mean, little kids in an anime, of course they look, they're cute, but like, yeah, they need to take a lesson from Tyrone. They need to learn how to put their dreams in action. I was just not a fan. Uh, Eldegoss was stupid. It just wasted the episode. <laughs> <laughs> But I did like that because of them, like, we got that flashback scene with uh, Cynthia, and in that flashback scene, they also, well, a very short flashback scene, but I did like that in that episode, um, they're, they mentioned, like, they kind of formed a connection between Ash's Lucaria with Cynthia's Garchomp with how they're both raised from eggs, and now they're, like, the aces of each team. Um, and I really like the fact that Cynthia recognized Lucario because of the fact that like she's herself heard about that egg and was curious by it too and then she's like oh so you were the one and I'm like yeah you know what I kind of like that like that kind of like makes me feel a little bit okay because we already know it's in the the preview for the next episode that Pikachu is out so it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to handle the fact that Lucario is probably going to be sweeping her team just because like she's okay with this Lucario um and, you know, then we got to the battle. Uh, I'm a fan of Rillaboom. I know a lot of people don't like Rillaboom. I, as somebody who likes Rillaboom, I thought it was hilarious how it was sweeping Diantha's team. Because if you use a Rillaboom competitively, which I learned from my wonderful VGC coach, Joker, who's in the chat, Rillaboom is amazing. And it can destroy an entire team, which people do not understand. Like, that is very easily done with Rillaboom. Um, so, when, because of the fact that it's just such a monster, I do think that the taking out of the most of her team was not that surprising. Um, that being said, I do think it would have made more sense for it to have been G-maxed during that, even if it was off-screen, because I think, like, the fact that it swept that many Pokemon of a champions team and it wasn't G Max, but like I think that was a little shocking, especially because he was still able to G Max Charizard. And we already know Charizard can handle a mega evolution with a line. But you know, I'm okay with it. I like as a Rillaboom user, I I'm a fan. Rillaboom rocks. It was banned in VGC for a reason. Like it's a good <laughs> Pokemon. Um at the end of the battle, I will admit I was a little sad when I saw Gardevoir get KO'd. Gardevoir is very pretty, and Gardevoir is a Pokemon I personally really like. Um, so I was sad to see it lose, and that's kind of when I agreed with most of the fan base that the battle was bad. But I'm not really that mad about it, probably like everyone else here is. Um, so if I had to give a rating, and my rating did go up, so when we watched it with everybody, it was like a two and a half. It's actually more like a four and a half now. It's gone up a little bit more than I thought it would. I'm not angry. That's my review. All right. Yay. Thank you for sharing that, buddy. Uh, so let us move on to the next person. Emmy, what do you have to say about the episode? All right. Uh, I'm in. I'm, I'm sorry, Cosmic. <laughs> No, I said everyone else is not gonna like it. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, I mean, okay, you did bring up some points that I liked as well. So, like for example, like the Go and the Project Mew stuff, I really did like that as well because I think it's nice that we're not gonna just jump into Project Mew sometime later down the road. It's not gonna feel like very like, all right, I guess we need to get this done. At least there's some like, like background prelude, plot going on. Exactly. So I can appreciate that. At least they're trying. So I'll give them that. Um, and even like Cynthia's backstory, I can appreciate as well. Like how she like hatched the Garchomp from an egg. We see small Cynthia. So cute. They like, we see the bond and it really like makes it show like how strong these two um, like are together. And like, they, they like, they're a champion force. Right? Let's be honest. They're a power force and they're a dynamic. So it's great. But um, then we immediately get into the cons where it's like, all right. And then they, they immediately related it to, um, Lucario and like Ash and like Ash like Ash and Lucario and like how their bond is just as strong and how um the egg picked Ash and I'm just like why did you have to relate it to that why why <laughs> it was barely relevant in this series okay but fine um and then we get into the rest of the episode which unfortunately is just a con for me so 
I love how Dragonite and like literally slid Ash into the plot. I think that was really funny. Um, and honestly, these kids, I said this when the preview came up, we don't have time for these kids. We don't got time for them. And they, I, I thought they were going to do well because halfway through the episode, they were about to leave. And then they came back because the, because she got lost. The girl got lost. And I'm like, damn it, freaking, why, why can you just be together? Why, why, why is this happening? No. <laughs> just as they were about to go and see the battle commence because it was starting. It, yeah, it's just, uh, like, all of this is just ridiculous. Like, like, also, the kids, right? Like, Toria, like, wants his first Pokemon to be a Grookey. Like, zero out of ten already. Like, I'm, I'm not okay with this. Like, and also the other thing too, like these kids just coming into the plot, and like the first question they asked too is like to Cynthia about like her backstory, which I found was so weird because I'm like, why is this like? I feel like the only reason why these kids were here was for that because it seems natural for them to ask instead of like Ash and Go for some reason. Even though like they could have lit like literally wrote this entire episode without them, Ash and Go could have asked that because they were just having a natural conversation. But no, they had to bring these kids to ask because they're like, oh Pokemon, I love them, they're so cute. Let's play with Pikachu. Wow, so nice. Um. But, yeah, like I said, these kids come back, and when they come back, and Ash and Go are like, alright, let's go find them. We're at the halfway point. Already. So, I already know, alright, there's, there's no hope now. And then this gossip floor, like, what, why? What, why was this not necessary? Like, I, I find it funny how this episode managed to steal, not steal, but like, I guess, reuse three concepts from previous, ep like, previous episodes in, like, Pokemon in general, which is, like, actually getting lost, which I would have rather watched, to be honest. Um... And, like, Serena finding, like, the Eevee dancing in X and Y. Because you have that little moment where you see Gossifleur, like, dancing around and singing. So that kind of reminded me of that. And then also Bye Bye Butterfleek. Because, like, this Pokemon evol evolved. And then we saw it fly away. So it's like, wh what? What? <laughs> what is this episode trying to be? It's trying to be everything and nothing at the same time. I was so confused. Um, and also that dancing scene just felt so unnecessarily awkward and long. Like, I felt like when I was watching that, that was at least a good, like, three minutes. And I'm like, why? Why, why is this? Like, I didn't need to see it jiggle jiggle. I didn't need to- I didn't need to see that! I didn't need to see it fly away. I-, I it doesn't make sense. And then when we come back, cause, like, they figure out- I guess they- uh, they do the quote-unquote plot, I guess. They go back to see the battle and it's half over. You know how it feels like to watch filler for an episode that's supposed to be plot-related come back to the battle and it's almost over? So I think that's disrespectful to Diantha, first and foremost, because I think KG said this in the reaction, but they have wrote Leon's character into such a way where if he loses, it will not make sense. Because they've written him to a point where he is just the strongest and nothing can take him down. Because all of these people that he's beating are champions. So it's like, what? This makes no sense. How is this possible? Like, I get it what Cosmic was saying too with the Rillaboom. Like, okay, I can understand that. But... I don't, like, narrative-wise, it just, they've written him to a point where it just doesn't make sense if Ash wins. It really doesn't, because, realistically, like, Ash doesn't really have much training in this series anyways. Like, the team that he has, it's not strong enough. Even his reserves are not strong enough. So, like, if he wins, how would this make any sense? Like, and what for the parts that we did see of the battle, too, like, Gujar getting hit once and then dying, it's the same format that Journeys is following, at least for the Master's 8, in terms of battles. It's just the one hit, they fall... Oh, we see, like, we barely see a quarrel, we barely see a struggle, there's nothing there. Um, and let me just throw into, I think, Team Rocket, like, showing the battle and slideshows hurt my soul. Um, because originally that's what we were supposed to get, right, for, like, these Master 8 battles that weren't focused on Ash, it was just PNGs. So that's what it felt like. And I just reminded myself of the Mirio fight from My Hero Academia, so I'm sorry, people. <laughs> uh, that's, that was how i felt and then jesse was a mood by being like you know what i don't care um punkaboo died so or yeah pumpkin died uh, i don't care <laughs> um and uh last and foremost like i said these battles just all follow the same pattern there's no struggle there's no quarrel it's just one hit and you're down that's it like and i want to say at the end with mega gardevoir that it was cool because like psychic was at least strong enough to like control that flamethrower but like it didn't even it didn't even give me enough time to be impressed because that happened so fast. I could walk away and in 30, like 20 seconds, I can come back and the battle's over. So it's like, I wish there was more. I wish it was dragged out more. I very much wish it was dragged out more because I just feel like that's the point of the anime. That's the point of these battles. It's, it's just, yeah, exactly, Rob. So it's an action replay, 100%. <laughs> um, but 
like I said, and um, they they wrote they wrote his character Leon's character just in this way where it just doesn't make sense if he loses now. It really doesn't. Like I really hope Ash doesn't win because realistically, this doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Um, and then the worst part of all is at the end, Leon just saying to Diantha, "I was just lucky." You know, like you made me sweat. What? What? That oh, the disrespect. The disrespect. That's literally like, the worst thing you can say. It's like, yeah, sorry, I, it's not my skill. I just got lucky. They, uh, yeah. Was, oh, and he's sad. So sad. I guess the only good part too is that Pikachu looks like pumped up for the next episode, but it's gonna lose. I already know what happens. I yeah, saw the that screenshot. Spoils oh. it. I saw that screech. I see that little light go down where Pikachu's <laughs> face is. I see it. I see it, Journeys. You can't fool me. You can't fool me. Oh, yeah. So preview. Not looking forward to this garbage. Definitely <laughs> not. Um, Joker says, "Have you talk about your video?" Yeah, do, yeah. Watch my. I made a video. It's on my uh, the Sister Dash channel. So go check it out if you would like. Um, basically, it's just my thoughts on the episode. It's it a really fun video to make, actually. And then I. Um, inter uh, inter not intertwined. What was I gonna say? I incorporated um Hell's Kitchen. You know, like the Gordon Ramsay just being like, "Where's the lamb sauce?" Yeah. <laughs> Instead of "Where's the lamb sauce?" It's "Where's the Masters Eight? Because that was my thoughts during this I episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, oh, gosh, a gift sub. Wow, baby Aww. blue. Oh yay! Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, but. Other than that, uh, if I had to give this episode a rating, it's a 3 out of 10 for me. I'm, I'm upset. I'm sad. I, I, I have no hope anymore. My, my hope is at an all-time low. It's even lower than it needs to be. At this point, it's just like, alright, I just want to see a, a plot that's just focused on one thing. Like, I don't know why this was necessary, but alright. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's about it for me. So, trash. Right. Recycling, not trash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, also thank you for sharing your input on that, Emmy, and also thank you to the uh, gift sub that Emmy yeah. stated before, given by our friend Navy Blue Suicune. I hope uh, the person is happy with the tier one gift sub. Enjoy the emotes, buddy. Uh, so thank you once again, Navy, for the gifties. We appreciate it. All right, so let us now move on into the next person here in the call uh nessa i shall pass this one on to you what do you have to say about the episode overall buddy uh sure so i have i actually did not rewatch the episode i only watched it on friday when we did the reaction night because that's afterwards i kind of was like i'm not feeling to go rewatch it so i'm just gonna go off from what i remembered from friday um so i so the i'll say the positives first uh so one of the positives I have is like I I was also glad of that uh, um, ghost uh, mu um, tr the new mission was mentioned. So that was like one of the like I was kind of like oh well, that's kind of cool. And actually I did like the scenery from the beginning of the episode, so I thought it was pretty cool. I feel like there's like a reference in there somewhere because it that's I can't really I can't right put my finger onto it, but I feel like I see like this scenery somewhere. I don't know why. So. Um, yeah, like I was like, probably the probably the second probably a reference to the second version of the one two three opening. I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> my, sorry, my mom came in. So. It's all right. It's all right. Um, but I kind of lost my place. I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, um, okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was like. All right, you were yeah, talking I, about you were talking about the um, the go stuff in the the beginning. The beginning, the okay. Reference, I know. was, yeah. I I feel like, yeah. I feel like I, yeah. I I was. I think I mentioned. I feel like I seen this before, but I actually love the scenery. And then also because green's kind of like my favorite color, so I kind of like that common effect. So that's probably why it was like it stuck out to me. And then also we got to know about Cynthia's um her backstory. I, that was another positive me. And also, I kind of mentioned this on Friday, but I was like, I love Cynthia's outfit. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it was like she looked so damn cool in it. And then I just love like the chill vibes that she's giving out from here. So I kind of love like the um, I love the blue and 
the blue sw- uh, shirt that she's going and the jeans and then just the boots. I was kind of like, I just, I just loved it. So I was kind of like commenting like her outfit that day when I first saw it. And also I kind of loved like she was like, uh, she was like, mis- like massaging her Pokemon in the beginning. So that was, I thought that was pretty cool to see. And then that was pretty cool to see. And then we get to know about her, um, her little Gibble um, guard chomp story when she had his an egg. So that was, that was pretty nice to see. Um, and I think for those two things, that's about it. Because after the rest of the episode, um, I actually laughed my ass off of this episode. I could not stop laughing of the how bad this battle was. I was just sitting here like, oh my god, what am I seeing? And I, I just, just laughed and laughed and laughed because I it was just like, I was like, wow, if I got my entertainment for a night, this, would, this is it. I actually honestly did not expect uh, Leon to speak. Diantha like that and I was just so puzzled I was like how <laughs> how um, I was just so puzzled like how like how Leon easily sweeps uh Diantha and then at the end he's like oh oh I got lucky I was like lucky like you're telling me that's lucky <laughs> I was okay no I was like kind of like annoyed so here's one thing for sure I like Leon I really like him, and I even liked him like pr- pr- up to this point. But I, I like him. I there's I actually didn't have any issues. I actually loved like he kind of like is a bit similar with Ash and everything, and then how they had like a, a bit more of a backstory. So I don't have any issues. But the way they they pedestal Leon to like near untouchable, I that's the part I don't like. And then seeing that battle, I feel like anything that happens beyond that, it's not going to be believable. It's going to be like, and the only way it will make sense to be, and I remember you, KG, you mentioned it, if they stay consistent, if that is if Leon sweeps Ash, that's that's the only way. Yeah, but I'll, I'll <laughs> also go into that too as yeah. well. So it's just, and then, so yeah, so that was like the part I was kind of like, and I was like, there is no way Ash's team is going to be toe and toe with him. There's just no way. I just can't see it. And if if that happens, then I'm just be like, no, that's not believable. I'm sorry. I was like, I, I was just like, uh-uh. And also, De- I'm not a Deantha fan. I'm not, like, I usually, I was not a big fan of hers. Because I was kind of like, eh, she's all right. It's also, I'm kind of re- playing with the X and Y games. Like, she was just too easy. And I kind of remember in the, in the X and Y anime, like, he, she, uh, Ash was able to, uh, Greninja was able to knock her, da- um, her Gardevoir down. So it was like so kind of like oh she's all right, so, but even even the, for, for someone who did not like the end, I still felt bad, bad for her. <laughs> so I still have bad. I still felt bad for her. So I was just like yeah, <laughs> like just like wow. And towards like the finale though, I made a comment saying that that I was like, did Charger know a water move? Because the way they animated that, I think it was a Max Airstream when he, uh, towards the end of the uh. With the Charizard versus a uh, Gardevoir fight, I was like, "That looked like water. That did not look like air to me, but it looked like fucking water. It looked like water to me." And but everyone, I think everyone was correct to me that night. But I was just like, I, "I'm still convinced it's water, just the way it was animated." But so I was just like, "Okay." Other than that, though, I don't have much to say. But it's just just only the thoughts I kind of went back from Friday, so. So, uh, rating wise, um, I'll give us a two and a half out of ten. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> let me also come back into this as well, since I apologize, uh, since I didn't uh, share my review uh, yet, because I just wanted to hear what others had to say before I hopped right into it. So, uh, I hundred percent agree with everything I said thus far in my review of the episode. I still a hundred percent believe that. Uh, my sense of believability when it comes to the uh, to the realism of Ash versus Leon is just gone at this point. There is no way for me to believe that Ash can come in knowing that he is going to struggle on the upcoming battle at hand is going to be something that will... Um, That'll be believable at all. I can't. I th- and that is gone. That is absolutely gone thanks to the events of this episode because they put they put Leon in such 
a huge leap at this point to where they made him go from what might have been unbeatable to like feeling invincible. Uh, obviously, he is not because his Pokemon have gotten knocked out in this battle. But like, if every single opponent, if every single journey we've seen of Leon's character thus far has been nothing but just showing that he is demolishing characters left and right, it makes it impossible for me to know that Ash isn't doing that same thing either throughout his journey. Like, if Ash was demolishing everyone in his path alongside Leon. Then at the two, they clash. Okay, there's some believability despite all the BS we had to get to that point. But there is a consistency towards that end goal. But when one character is struggling and the other one is quote unquote saying that he is getting a sense of sweat or something. I can't in good judgment say that's good storytelling because it's not. And it hurts because I've stated this thousands of times and I'll still say it again. And Nessa and others have said it too. I don't hate Leon. There is a difference between liking a character and disliking the series that the character is attached to. They can be separated. They can be two different things. I could still like Leon as a character because I have the games. I have Master ZX. I have Twilight Wings. I have Generations, you know, or whatever the new variation was. I have these other versions of Leon that do more to his character. To me personally, I still enjoy those variations. And I cannot sadly in good conscience say the same thing for Leon in Journeys. The reason why that's the case is not because of how he's being treated. It's more so how this is affecting the character that is the main focus of the series, Ash. And if we go back to series prior to uh, to the world of Journeys, you know, in OS, in AG, DP, BW, all of these, they always have a common goal. It's always about the character starting from scratch and meeting to a particular location by the end, which is a league. This is the first series that puts itself in a position to where it puts a character as being the focus of the series. Not a location, just a character. We know that the world championships will be held somewhere, but that's not our focus. Our focus is to see Ash going up against Leon. And this continues to progress further with the series and makes every battle going uh, to this moment feel less tense because now every battle doesn't feel genuine no more. We all know what's going to happen to Ash. We all know he has to move forward and we all know that his rank has to go up because if it continues to go down, uh, we'll never see the boy ever make it to the Masters 8, you know. There's never a sense of like a journey for Ash's team to progressively grow together, lose together, win together. It's always just been Ash having to make these uh, weird comebacks and all that stuff through every story to get to Leon. And it, when you once again see this character going through all these struggles and you see another character like Leon who isn't doing any of that and is simply beating and dethroning every opponent that is a trainer mind you uh in his path yeah i i'm sorry i just cannot in good conscience say that ash versus leon is going to be a believable battle mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. that that's just me though at the end of the day i'm like and let me just be clear that's ash versus leon i'm not talking bad about ash versus cynthia because that still has a genuine moment that could come through because both of these characters weren't written in the PWC thus far. They're, they're in it, but they weren't written to show how strong they truly are during their matches. We've seen like glimpses and peaks of it, but never the full story or the context. And also, most importantly, she's not the core focus. She is just a part of the Masters 8, but she isn't the end goal like everyone else. Um, so... I'm looking forward to Ash versus Cynthia the most. There has been years of buildup to it. People who've watched DP know how much of a big deal this yeah. is. There is a three and there's a three episode for this semifinals match. You know, 
And there was a buildup in this episode that focuses on the backstory of Cynthia too. I may not, look, I'll say this. I find it cute, but I don't find it essential is the thing with this one. Because it it delivers more story towards Cynthia. But it doesn't help things when that backstory doesn't go a little extra. It, it was simple, basic, and to the point. But I was really hoping that this whole episode would have just been more of that. It felt uh, it felt empty to me. Like I wanted more of that. Because it's such an adorable thing that we'll never see again. So why don't you take the opportunity to show us more of these backstories, you know? Let us see more of the history behind Cynthia so that way when these moments come where Ash will fight against Cynthia, you kind of are rooting for both sides, you know? You want to see how these two became who they are today. Uh, but sadly, we'll never get a chance to see it, at least from this episode. Uh, so, yeah. Overall, the episode was a mess. It ruined my expectations for how Ash and Leon could potentially turn out. Uh, I'll still enjoy the battle. Let me be clear. I'll still enjoy Ash versus Leon as long as I keep it separate from the series that it's supposed to be attached to and just view it for what it is rather than what it's a part of, which is weird to say, but that, that's just how I genuinely feel. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's my take on it. If I had to give it a score, I still will say... There are positives on this episode. I still like certain things. There are moments in this episode that genuinely were hype. I love the moment at the end with Cynthia versus Leon, like with the clash of the birds, the flaming birds. That was really cool. And then that kind of dwindled down immediately after he decided to use the fire attack to yeah. dethrone the fire attack again. And I'm like, can't you just let this guy struggle even once, man? I know. And then it looked like fucking water. <laughs> Yeah, right? it, it almost looked like water when it wasn't water. That was the hilarious yeah. part about it. Uh, so, yeah, that's just my take on it. I am disappointed with this episode. I am absolutely disappointed with it. It ruins a lot of expectations. It ruins believability, which is the most important thing you're not supposed to tamper with. And it ultimately is going to provide uh, just little for me personally. Uh, but I know people have their different opinions. And let me be clear, I can still dislike an episode and others can enjoy an episode. Some people might view it higher or lower depending if they do a second rewatch. It's just for me, uh, having watched it the first time around and being mad about it and rewatching it again, I can confidently say that nothing has changed in terms of my opinion. It is still the same feeling, but that's just me. At the end of the day, that's just my review. That's just how I feel. So as a score, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 10. I still yeah, find certain give... things good. I just oh, wow. don't yeah, well, think Y'all that... give it a 2.5 and I give it a 3. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I don't know where the, where the point five five is. From. Oh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> the backstory. It's the backstory. Uh, and you want to know what pulls it back down? It being PNGs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, not even that, too. What pulls it down, too, is the egg thing, how they related it to Lucario. Like, that actually made, like, a big difference. I was just like, like, that's the same thing. I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, because <laughs> you guys, too, you got, you two have a big bond. Yeah, okay, okay, sure. uh, Let's mm -hmm. just remember, uh, how old was Cynthia when she got that, uh, that little cute-ass gibble, and how old is she now? How much time has passed since then? Oh, like, maybe a yeah. decade or so? Well, yeah. A decade, like a decade or two, maybe? I think she's portrayed, yeah. like, 20 in the games. I could have sworn they made her older, but whatever. Uh, a, a decade and a half. Let's go with that. 15 yeah. years, right? How old is that Lucario? Ash is still 10, right? So it's like... Yeah, so, like, well, roughly... like well, one year, one and a half, two, two years old? Five? I don't yeah, know. That's funny. Uh, I could have sworn. Cynthia I only counted two months. Oh, three. Oh, two, I was going to say two, three months. She's <laughs> 33. So two She's decades 30. then. So let's go with two decades, okay? Two decades with that adorable ass Gibble becoming a Garchomp. And that Lucario is about two months old. If we, if we go. Yeah, that, it, that's exactly the same thing, right? Yeah. Clearly. Yeah, they, there, there's clearly definitely a definitely knows how she feels. Yeah. Ugh. That, that's oh, what wait, I'm wait. saying. Like, my biggest wait. concern was just simply having to put Leon in such a pedestal. Had they just kept this in Galar, I think things would be a different story. But because we decided to branch out across the world and we're following the young boy from Pallet Town, yes, 
there's a lot of backstory. There's a lot of history that's riding on these battles and a lot of passion from fans. That's why people were pissed off with how things played out with Alon a couple of weeks back. Or was it two months back? But there's just all these emotions and they are understandable for at least i believe so thank you navy for the 200 bitty bits much appreciated so yeah that's my take overall sorry if i went on a bit of a ramble i just wanted to simply okay. reiterate uh the things that i mentioned in my review portion on friday and sadly it still remains the same even now uh and am i looking forward to ash for cynthia yes because i've waited for it for 20 to like from 25 years now since with ash and all that i think we've always wanted to see ash continue to battle champions uh so this series has been doing that whether they've been good or not that's its own separate story but it's just the thought of ash having to go up against cynthia uh, a character that we've known for so long since dp coming in and providing that it, it's gonna be great um yeah. at least i hope <laughs> i we hope. get to see Chowder shield yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. I hope there, there is a little sense of hope, but they could also be pulled. Like, that yeah. counter shield could be what kills Pikachu in that battle. You never know. Because yeah, Pikachu we'll hasn't see. done that in a hit good while, oh, so he probably done like, goofed and missed and trips and falls and dies. Oh, like that. I'm imagining it. No, <laughs> it Pikachu. It shields and breaks down, and then the Gastrodon just plops on top of it and just splats it in the field. There you go. Boom. I dead. don't want a flat pancake, Pikachu. <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, that, that's my take. Uh, 2.5 out of 10. All right. TSS, you are the last person for tonight, right. if I'm correct. So yes. uh, I pass it on to you, buddy. I'm still going to hear, just to reiterate. I'm just going to go throw some things away, but I will be listening to what's happening right now. So uh, TSS, take it away, buddy. Uh, let me know what you think of the episode so far. All right, so here is my so so here is my reasoning and my thought. First of all, yes, it's a mediocre episode, but let's talk about it for a little bit. Um, so st so let's go in order. So the beginning with the um, Project Muse stuff, I really liked that. It's a it's a setup for eventually what's going to be happening because obviously they're going to have to do it before the finals. So it's nice that they actually did a. A reminder that what what Go has to face with it or that he's going to have to face in the next few weeks. So that's wonderful. Um. So all right. So let's get so let's get into meat and potatoes. So, um, showing Satoshi training was nice. Um, having Dragonite go uh causing the inciting incident of the episode was good. Um, the kids are there to not only engage with the younger audience but to also serve as kind of a a setup and an inspiration for those kids because they also mentioned in that episode, those kids, they really love Pokemon and, you know, they can't wait until, you know, and, and uh, I think, I think um, Vic, uh, Vic was more apprehensive to Pokemon than Toria. And not only, not only it's a portmanteau of Victoria, but it's also victory. If you, if you interpret it that way as well. So this is a setup. So this is a whole setup to, um, put Satoshi and Cynthia over for next week. Now, um, the, and also, and also it, it, once again, it shows the kind of state for children, right? So they're showing them, showing them, uh, those kids was kind of a parallel to showing Cynthia when she was younger with the gibble egg. Um, it was very interesting that they actually went into the whole plot of, Oh, um, why didn't you get one of the starters? And then it's like, oh, I got, I, somebody gifted me the egg. That was something I didn't know. And that was a pretty cool backstory. Um, the whole Satoshi thing, you know, I still find it very odd. But in, but in reality, the, Luca, the, the Ri, Riolu egg called him. So again, it's still, they kind of have the, the parallels of that. Um, so when we get to the stadium, when they get to outside of stadium, first of all, Masafumi Mima deserves a lot of credit. Because this is the first time that we heard just the um, the um, the chanting from the um, Dynamax song, which was really cool. Um, so I think I think they, they they did they did it nice in terms of that motif. Um, the whole um, one of one of my theories about why they did have to cut away again was because if you look closely in the credits. There are a lot of first and second key animation, which tells me that a lot of studios had to work on this, and probably the the big time 
um, battle animators were busy animating the other episodes. So the, after after watching that and looking at all, all, all of those credits, I understood why they did this. The other reason is to um, to get the glo uh, Glossifer line off of the checklist of Pokemon, uh, Galar Pokemon that they need to show, but also to teach evolution, right? To show the kids evolution, get them excited for what they want, what what they're going to, what they're going to do, and that's uh, and and it shows well. That's the evolution, you know, from you know from uh, Gibble to Garchomp, you know, the double evolution, and also the fact that you know Riolu to Lucario. That's a, that's a demonstration of the evolutionary thing, and that's and that's what inspires the kids. So in that respect, it did well. Um, so let's get to the fight. So now the, the title, the title of this episode is kind of misleading as a sweep because technically it was not a sweep because like I said, uh, mega guard of war did knock out the Villa boom. So technically it's not a sweep. So that's kind of a misnomer there. Um, the recap slideshow thing, like I said, um, after, after looking at how many, um, first and second key animators worked in this episode, it's understandable. But um, as far as the and and uh, and actually didn't think about you know Cosmic made, made a great point about how OP um, Rillaboom could be in battling. So at least that portion I can believe in. Um, the Giganimax Charizard it did look okay, but again it's a it's a it's kind of a far cry of what like you know if, if Tyrone would have mentioned you know the the Dynamax still looked better when they were kind of semi transparent like back in episode twelve. Yeah. Um, but it didn't look that bad. The uh, at least it didn't have like very low amounts of key animation. So at least they at least they spent a little bit of time and a little bit of effort in that Gigantamax Charizard versus Mega Guardivore fight because I was about I was about to I was about to dump this shit, dump this fucking episode because of that. But but at least at the ending, at least Mega Guardivore did a, uh, had a decent fight. Um, especially uh, dot um using psychic to um control and pretty much uh, attack um a, a, a Gigantamax Charizard with those two moves and of course Leon has to you know be the um the clever one and just throw a third attack on the final move and that pretty much destroys it but at least but at least Mega Guardivore didn't go down without a fight at least it didn't get fucking one at least technically it did not get one shot uh, well, or like one Pokemon out, so at least it's that. But again, it, it show it, it shows that you could tell that they're prioritizing um, Satoshi versus um, Shirana or Cynthia. Um, so I understand why the episode is mediocre, and it is. But there was some. But but if you look between the lines and actually look at the effort that was made to kind of put them over, and I would say. Um, it was half successful in terms of putting both um, Cynthia and Santoshi over. Um, the the side plot was mediocre, but it was passable. But the battle was not great until the last like minute or two. And um, with that being said, at least the good thing is there was no like post fight shit that was like bullshit about it because that's why I didn't like the Iris fight a lot because of the bullshit that happened afterwards, at least they didn't have to, at, at least we didn't have to suffer through that kind of filler at the end, like padding at the end of the episode. You just have hops, you know, congratulating that stuff. And I think, and I think the line with Leon being lucky, like I said, it's a, it's kind of like, it, it's, it's kind of like a, the cockiness and I can understand mm -hmm. why people don't like it, but it's just the cockiness that they made, you know, that they made him have. And a lot of people don't agree with that, but I say, meh, whatever. It's just it's just a mid thing. So um, with that being said, some of the some of the concepts are great. Uh, were o were okay ish, and the others are mediocre. So six point eight is my score on this, and that is my review. Understandable, buddy. Like we said before earlier on in the in the portion, everyone has their opinion. Some high, some low. Um, you know, I am going to it's still, respectfully... it's still the second lowest. It's still the second lowest score I've ever given this, this series. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. Like yeah. I said, uh, or I was going to say, I still respectfully disagree under certain things you might have stated, but I can understand from your angle, like what it is you enjoy. And if you enjoy it or dislike certain things I might like or vice versa, that's perfectly okay. I have no reason to to go after someone over an opinion if they like or dislike certain portions. And you already gave your reasonings on the pros and cons anyway. So yes, uh, it's perfectly understandable. And everyone here had given their fair share in the reviews. Uh, it's still averagely going pretty low from everyone overall if we were mm -hmm. to rate or rank everyone's score total here uh and now it's just a mystery to find out whether or not cynthia and ash's battle will truly be the thing oh. that can maybe up the ante for this thing but as of right now the beginning of the uh masters eight matches hasn't left a lot to be desired and the first semi-final match definitely left things in sour taste in people mouths so now I like one one thing one thing to mention before we go um mm -hmm. so once again they're having the um giveaway for south of Seas pokemon the next one is dragonite and uh this uh this password is good until it said it says thursday september 8th at eleven fifty nine um p.m which translates to an eastern daylight time that is um 10 59 a.m on thursday so if you want your level 80 Dragonite, that is South Sea Dragonite, you can enter the code U as an Umbrella, M as in Mary, number one, N as in Nancy, the number zero, K as in Kevin, E as in Edward, S as in Sam, H as in, H as in Harry, the number one, and N as in Nancy. Huh. So you can get that until Thursday morning at 10.59 p.m. Eastern. So 10.59 a.m. Eastern. Nice. Nice. So everybody, go ahead. And grab Temporary. your confirmed, yeah. by the way, confirmed female Dragonite. Because a lot of us were uncertain as to what Dragonite's gender was. But thanks to this thing being released, uh, it is officially confirmed to be a female Dragonite. Now Yay. we know. Now you so know. So now you know. And knowing is half the battle, I think. Uh, so let's also go and wrap things up by just seeing the overall opinions of the chat as well uh chat just write down a numerical score from a one to a ten what would you rank the episode overall i know we did just have a poll i will check on it right now it seems that like two percent view it uh decent five percent view it bad 28 percent view it meh it's okay and 66% view it as very bad. But let's see the individual scores, though, that we got so far in the chat. Goggles saying a bad 2, Galar 2, Chun 2, Navy 3.5, Felipe 2, Dill 1, Curl 1, Joker 0, Jean or Jean 1, Azure 4, <laughs> Miguel 1 for effort. 1 for effort. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least you're tried. There you yeah. go. Uh, let me see. Samurai Trainer uh, 3. Uh, Ty Sane still waiting. Red Dragon Emperor ne negative 10 out of 10. Jeez, I almost read that as 10 out of 10. I was about to say, wow, you found that great. A star 3. Mornox 4. Signer, uh 5.9. So almost close. It was a 5.5, but I upped it up to a 6.5. Hey, look at that. Sam. Oh, interesting. So yeah, and uh, Grankle giving it a 3 or 3.5. Okay. I just, I just want to give a Masters 8 episode like a score for four. That's it. Just four. Just let just just a four over. Now you know what? No, I wanted to give it at least a six. Please, just just let, one let's episode. Let's part one of the three part Ash uh, versus Cynthia fight does that for you, then. Yeah, but KG <laughs> Pikachu dies, so that's already a, like a three at best. <laughs> hey, the Pikachu Damn. will probably die in part two. How about that? Will that make it better then? Maybe part one will okay, survive fine. that. Yeah, I don't know. Three point five. Well, well I hope okay. Pikachu <laughs> takes somebody out, so let's hope for that. It'll I be okay, oh, please. don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> in Pikachu, yeah, we kind of trust. I hope. Hi, we kind of trust? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. At this point, yeah. All right, so that's going to be a wrap, ladies and gentlemen, on our review portion of the JN episode uh, number 122, I think. Yeah, 122. Yes. 122. Okay, so yeah, uh, we're going to go and wrap things up for tonight. We do have one last thing to discuss. A uh, very small thing, but just as a heads up because we're uncertain as of it right now. Uh, supposedly, there is a Nintendo Direct happening sometime in September this week. 
which I think is the final day of the Friday being the second. Uh, so yeah. rumors are circulating that there might be a direct happening on September 2nd. Uh, to what extent that direct could be, we do not know. But remember, the last time we got a full-fledged Nintendo Direct was earlier in the year. Not counting the E3 one, because there wasn't an E3 one. There was a Nintendo Direct third-party showcase. And then there were individual Directs. And then there were uh, indie Directs. But there was never a full-on Nintendo Direct, purely just that as a title. So... With that being said, there might be something happening later this week. Keep your eyes peeled in the Nintendo official Twitter account to learn more details about what could potentially come from said Nintendo Direct. Uh, and whether or not I'll be reacting to it, we'll find out soon. Uh, so yeah, I think that is pretty much it in terms of topics. I'm going to probably go soon as well because I need to go and start trying to beat the shit out of the Elite Four in Pokemon Master ZX because I haven't mm -hmm. really done that yet. <laughs> so yeah. got to go take oh, care of that. that. Uh, nice. So wish me luck, everyone. I'm going to try to make sure Pikachu just single-handedly stops the whole competition. Uh, but <laughs> let, let, let's go and call it a wrap by also talking about some last things we're going to be doing throughout the week. Why don't we? I think yes. it's important for us to talk about things that are going to be happening within the week. So let's get into it. Uh, let us begin. I'm going to actually show this off on stream. Might as well because I have yeah. the ability to do so. Uh, let us take this over here. We're going to go and share this right now. Uh, we are going to be having a stream schedule uh, here for y'all lovelies uh, shown on screen. I, I hope it is. Um, I know maybe for you guys here in the call it might not. Uh, but I know on the Twitch stream, hopefully it shows there. It's, it's showing. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's okay. showing. All right, so there, yeah, we're going to be having that. Uh, Monday, obviously, 9 already, we did the PokePod. Tuesday, it's going to be Mario Party Superstars, and some of our friends here in this call are going to be joining me in that one. Yay! Emmy and uh, Cosmic will be joining me alongside our buddy Joker uh, as yeah. well, who was with us sister last squad. week. Yeah, it's actually going to be another sister squad of me for, for Tuesday. <laughs> so, yeah, we are going to be there uh, for this one. How will things shape up, though, for this Mario Party session? Who knows? But if you you guys seen our last less experience lethal. less lethal than pumble party <laughs> less, le <laughs> yeah, right, less lethal and less bs let's go with that i yeah. swear to god emmy should have won that one out of pure luck alone i should have i should have <laughs> Uh, you like okay. blue, don't you, KG? No, I like pink. Uh, Wednesday, 9 p.m., we're going to be continuing on with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, still on Chapter 7, but we're going to continue doing more side quests and more missions leading up towards the big finale, uh, which uh, I guess I can now confidently say will happen on Saturday uh, because Saturday, originally, I thought it was going to be the goggle thing. Now we know it's not going to, so it means it gives me a chance to now do the finale of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 this Saturday at 2 p.m. And yes, I say finale because we're going to do our best to, to plunge through the finale of Chapter 7. Will I be able to complete all of it by then? Hell do I know, but hey, fingers crossed we get through it together, ladies and gents. So that's going to be it for, uh, for Saturday and on Wednesday. More Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, Thursday... So Thursday's usually the tripod, but as you guys already know, our buddies uh, Terrell, aka the Insane Game Freak, and Tyrone are going to be uh, MIA for a bit. Uh, so they will not be streaming throughout the weeks ahead of us, and therefore I was thinking there might have been a tripod now, but I don't necessarily know yeah. if there will be one because, well, I have no guests for that one, uh, and I don't know the schedules on that. So... I'll see what I can come up with for that. I'll probably talk with others. I mean, we could technically do another podcast session with uh, with some of the girls here as well. I mean, let, let me uh, ask you guys if you're willing to do that for that one. Uh, for, I mean, uh, Cosmic or uh, Nessa on that aspect. And oh, I might damn. even ask Polly for that too. I think it'll be interesting to see. Because I think we haven't had a really much of a QA and a from, uh, from, uh, from us in a while. So I think that would be kind of fun uh, uh -oh. for that. Oh, what day are you thinking for? Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. I'll let you know oh. on that. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, Thursday okay. night. But like I said, I, it's to be decided, so I don't know. Uh, I'll keep you guys up to date, of course. Uh, and okay. that also applies to the chat, too. Uh, after that, we got on Friday, Annie Poke Watch Party with the latest episode of PM 2019, Yay. 9 p.m. So make sure to tune in there. Uh, we are going to be doing some revisions as well for the Annie Poke Watch Party. And I guess you guys will learn more about it as well uh, yeah. this upcoming Friday. So make sure to stick around for that. 
So that is going to be it for me Saturday. Of course, you know, Blaze 3, as I mentioned before, and Sunday, usually there's no stream. So don't expect anything from me. Just a lot of sleeping <laughs> and working. So that's it on my side. Uh, TSS, I passed this one on to you, buddy. What yeah. is your what is your idea for the week? So since um so so I'm gonna be doing a bonus stream on Wednesday, um most likely at about I wanna say eight thirty PM. Uh we're gonna continue going through Final Fantasy VIII because I know that a lot of people I'm gonna do that because since uh Terrell will not be streaming for the next few weeks, um I'll probably just play like Final Fantasy VIII on uh, Wednesdays until he comes back. Just to give people um, the opportunity to watch something while he's away, um, and then on Friday, hopefully, actually no. So this Friday there's going to be no stream because I will be participating in the uh, Elton John Euro 1986 Tier Maker with my friend Greg Synth Wizard. That will not be live. That'll be recorded and then it will be posted on his channel at some point. So the people who like the to hear me rant about Elton John stuff. Um, expect that in the future. Um, Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have, um, we're going to go finally back into the world of uh, maternal bound, re uh, material bound, maternal bound redux, which is the earthbound mod. And uh, we are currently um, in the uh, halfway point of the game. So hopefully we're going to get some progress there 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Um, nothing on Sunday and uh and probably, like I said, that's that's my schedule for the week. Um, Tales of Asperia Definitive Edition will most likely return next Friday, um, the Friday the Friday afterwards on September the 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern. So stay tuned for that, and always um, keep up keep uh, posted on my Twitter account at TSS Killer without the underscore. All righty, thank you for that. Uh, well, actually, Cosmic, I also have to give a shout out for you once again. Thank you so much for your support on the. Uh, on the various things that we've been doing lately here, and thank Happy you for help. hopping on uh, through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so thank you for joining us tonight's session. We really do appreciate it, and Yay. we will love to see you, of course, back again for more silly shenanigans in the future, if whenever you wish. You're always more than welcome to join us for these kind of oh. things, buddy. Well, thank you. Yep, just let me know when. I'm All good. right, I'm, I'm uh, here anyway. Yeah. So shout outs to our buddy once again, Cosmic Vengeance Yay. underscore. Make sure to go and follow her over on twitch.tv slash cosmic vengeance underscore i hope that's correct <laughs> it is and, correct and uh, of course Yay. on your channel as well okay. your youtube channel too so make sure to go and check out and uh thank you once again cosmic for all your support we really do appreciate it and yes. let's also thank, thank everyone you. else in this call too for tonight emmy nessa polly as well who was with us earlier and tss thank you guys so much for hopping on through we hope you guys uh we're having a good time with this one. And to those in chat, we hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful time as well. It was a great podcast for tonight. And it is just the beginning of many great things that are going to be happening throughout the week. So we hope you guys sit back, relax, and enjoy the week ahead of you. If you'll join us back again next Monday at 9 p.m. for another Pokepod session, we'll be more than happy to have you back on board. Thank you all once again for your love and support. Let's go and call it a night then, why don't we? Uh, let's go. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm kind of happy we're also wrapping things up early. Not every session needs to be three hours long, damn it. <laughs> but Thank I am grateful. That. I'm grateful <laughs> that we still, throughout the time, managed to get quite a lot of discussions throughout i think that's the great part about tonight's session uh, mm -hmm. so yeah thank you all so much for your support all right then everyone uh we wish you guys a happy week ahead of you tss please send us off by giving them the magic words wash your fucking hands thank you and uh we'll speak with all you lovelies later in whatever video we make take care everyone and as always have yourselves an awesome day bye everybody Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.